We are now 27 minutes away from the start of the broadcast of Whitford County at Simon Kitten, the pregame show. 27 minutes away from Independence, Kentucky and Whitford County High School football. We are now 23 minutes away from tonight's broadcast of Whitford County Simon Kitten football. 23 minutes away.
We are now 20 minutes away from the opening of Whitford County High School football on the pregame show. 20 minutes away. Testing, one, two, three, four, five. Testing, one, two, three, four, five. Testing, testing. Testing, testing. Welcome to Whitford County High School football. Testing, testing.
We are 10 minutes from the pregame show of the Yellow Jackets road trip to Independence, Kentucky to take on Simon Kitten. 10 minutes away from the start of the programming. We are six minutes away from programming on the Yellow Jacket Sports Network. Six minutes away.
Good evening from. This concludes our 2022. Good evening from Independence, Kentucky, in Northern Kentucky. It's Woodford County High School football. Final game of the regular season here in Northern Kentucky as the Yellow Jackets travel to take on the Simon Kitten Pioneers who come in with a record of six and three. The Jackets looking to finish 10 and 0 for only the second time in school history and it'll be the first time in school history that they do it in back-to-back -back seasons. The Jackets come in uh, after uh, a very convincing win over East Jessman last week in 48 to seven. Jackets do know they host a first round playoff game in class 5A when they take on the Colonels of Whitley County. But before that, they have to deal with the 6A power in Simon Kenton on senior night here in Independence. Glad you're with us. Darren Douglas along with Brian Staples sitting in tonight for Andy Smith. And we're glad to have you along with us as we will be following a lot of football around the area as you get a look here at McClellan Field just behind the Simon Kenton High School. A very nice drive up tonight. And, Brian, thank you for joining us again uh, this Friday night. Hey, Darren, I'm thrilled to death to be here. This is a uh, – should be an extremely good game tonight. Um, you know, don't let the – don't let the 6-3 and three record of Simon Kenton fool you. No. They, they played – they played some good football this year, and I expect we expect a really good game tonight. So, but we're confident the Jackets are going to be ready, and and we'll see where we go when we get this kickoff here in just a few minutes. Well, that six and three record comes via uh, uh, three losses to no slouches. They lose at home to Southwestern, 31-19. They also lose at home uh, to. Uh, Beachwood by a score. I was on the road to Beachwood, 30 to seven, and at home here to Corbin by a score of 38-35. So uh, you see who they lose to. They lose to the number one team in 2A. They lose to uh, the number uh, two team in th uh, 4A uh, in Corbin, and then they lose to uh, a really good uh, Southwestern team who is the number five team in 5A, uh, according to the RPI. But that being said, uh, they did knock off Highlands at Highlands, 42 to 40 in a slugfest. So we'll see what happens there. As you look at our screen here uh, at McClellan Field, just below the scoreboard, you see a ticker there. Those games are only games that interest us here tonight. And we have the three other district opponents who have qualified for the district uh, for the playoffs for next week. Uh, as far as who will play where and everything, we have no idea. The other district has been settled. If we go across District Bryan into District 8, that is the number one seed decided last week when Southwestern beat Pulaski County 31-20. So Southwestern is the one seed. Pulaski is the number two seed. The three seed was already decided in North Laurel. And then we, of course, were trying to find out the Whitley County-South Laurel game last week. We found out it's Whitley County as they knocked off South Laurel, who goes winless for, I think, the third year in a row for the Cardinals, which is a tough uh, knock on that athletic program because they are a very proud athletic program down in south, uh, southeastern, south Kentucky, whatever you want to say. They're right there in the middle. <coughs> that being said, if things can work out, who knows? We may have to go to another tiebreaker to get our two, three, and four seats. They are between West Jessman, Collins, and Madison Southern. If you didn't listen to the program last night with Coach Dennis Johnson on the From the Sidelines program, this is how it goes. West Jessman knocked off uh, Collins. Collins beat Madison Southern. Madison Southern beat West Jessman. So now they're all two and two in district play. So they have to play tonight. So this will figure this out. So as you see along the bottom of the screen, south, uh, we get West Jessman tonight, travels to Harrodsburg to take on Mercer County. Yeah. That could help us if Mercer can knock off West Jessman. However, if West Jessman wins, they could pro more than likely be the number two seed in our uh, half of the bracket as far as uh, our district's concerned. Collins gets great crossing at home. Okay, that one could be a tough one as well. But to be honest with you, Great Crossing doesn't figure in the RPI very well because they will be the number uh, 
three seed in the other district, uh, the other half of the district, they will have to go on the road to play their first round game. Don't know who they'll play. But number four, <laughs> Madison Southern will be on the road tonight at Franklin County. That'll be a tough game. That will be tough for Madison Southern. So uh, looking at it, I think st- – what will happen is I think West Jessman in the tie break situation, no matter how it works out, will be the number two seed, even though they have a, 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 a more of a losing record than does Collins. Collins will have the three seed, and then uh, Madison Southern will be our four seed. That all being said, our half of the bracket, if we win next week, we get the winner of Pulaski County and who our three seed is yep. at Community Stadium. So we've got two guaranteed home games. And then if things really work out, we could get a third one in the third week if we get to that level. So a lot of things going on. We also will keep an eye on the score for you from Danville. Frederick Douglass travels to take Boyle County. They could drop back and come back to the whole pack when it comes to the RPI. So a lot of things going, a lot of interesting things going. We also have the coming to Catholic Ryle game on there just for people to keep a little track of, just for uh, – just, uh, just for edification's sake. Just, just to keep you interested <laughs> and to keep things going. Yes. You know, being, being, the, uh, being the old coaches that we are, you know, we, we talk about these brackets and we talk about the anticipation of, of, of games down the road. But, you know, the focus has got to be right here at Simon Kenton tonight when they kick off, taking care of business here, and then we'll, then we'll move our concentration right. toward Whitley County. Right. which we've got at home next week. Right, and and just for everybody to know, we have played Whitley County before. We've played them three times. We are one and two against the Colonels all time, and we'll get more into that when we get to that next week. But tonight, it's football in northern Kentucky. It's Woodford County and Simon Kenton. They will hook it up again here in just a moment. Jackets won last year's affair over Simon Kenton in the rain and cold at Community Stadium by a final score of 50 to 13 in that one. Uh, and the Jackets ran the ball at will against the Pioneers, and we'll see if they are able to do the same thing here tonight on senior night. And, boy, was it a senior night here. They yeah, it was honored, a long one. They, they honored, honored everybody, I think, that's in a fall sport, which, yeah. was, which was a long pregame. A but, long one. But it really looked nice. I mean, it was a great honor to it, all of those seniors who've really put forth a lot at this at this school. So. Um, it was kind of impressive to see them all lined up there and and hear the con- love to hear the comments of seniors when they talk about getting ready to leave school and what sports has meant to them and what teammates mm-hmm. have meant to them. All the cross country folks uh, said it was their favorite memory was uh, hiding in their cars from their coach when he went in the building for a phone call. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then there was one young lady uh, that really uh, shows what athleticism and athletics and heart will carry you. She broke her foot in her junior year early in a race and she finished. And she finished. Now that that that's dedication, that's mm-hmm. heart. Yep. Um you know those I couldn't are do it, t- I'll tell you now. Those are the types of things that you that you can't teach no. anybody. You can't. I, I was gonna say kids, but you can't teach that to anybody. No. Uh even us former athletes it's a little tough to, to even imagine. Uh, doing that these days. want to also give all our fans uh, some information going on around Versailles and in the state of Kentucky regarding Woodford County and Woodford County High School in speci- and specifically. want to uh, wish uh, the band, the high school band, good luck. They will be in Bowling Green tomorrow uh, for the state band competition at Western Kentucky University's uh, Hot, uh, Houchins Field. I almost said Dill Arena. That's the basketball. That's the basketball. End of it, uh, about a couple of months ahead there. But they will be down there tomorrow, and uh, they are, are uh, they, from my house in, in Versailles, I can hear them practicing. Uh, and they sound good. So we'll see if they can bring home some hardware from the state band competition down in Bowling Green. Good luck to those folks. Also, uh, I want to tell uh, – uh, Good luck to our boys and girls cross-country participants in the state meet tomorrow at Masterson Station Park. Uh, They used to have it at the Kentucky Horse Park, Mm -hmm. but they've moved it since then. 
Um, so I want to wish them luck, and I'll give me the names. The two boys that have qualified are Jace Kroom and Ryan Hendricks for the boys. And for the first time in school history, to my memory, our girls' team qualified all seven runners. You know, that, that is – that's an honor. That's an honor. That's a tribute. That is hard work and dedication. Um, you know, cross-country running, my hat's off to you. I agree. Uh, Coach Brooks Strickland, uh, Stickle, has done a great job with that group. And Coach, uh, uh, the other head, the assistant coach, Dr. Phil Latham, done a wonderful job with the, with those guys and gals. And the girls that have qualified, Addison Moore, Maggie Twehus, uh, Macy Stickle, Gabby Gappert, Larkin Hewitt, Mia Van Hoos, Van Hoos, excuse me, and Evie Hamilton. So congratulations and good luck to the cross country jackets in the Absolutely. state. Absolutely. Meet tomorrow. And, and we would encourage anybody that's listening and watching tonight that uh, if you get a, if you get a chance and you want a, a good opportunity to really watch an endurance sport. Go That's out it. to Masters, Masters and Station tomorrow and watch these cross-country runners. It, it's fascinating to watch them and look at the pace that they set and the terrain they have to run. And, you know, it, it's a – man, it's a tribute, Darren, to, to having the entire girls' team qualify for the state and be able to run. Yeah, it is. And we have a couple of young ladies that could finish in the top ten. And one that has a shot if she runs her race and gets a clean uh, track to run as far as – so she can run her race, may come on a state champion. Oh, wow. Wouldn't yeah. that be a treat? We'll see. Uh, that's coming from the athletic director who wishes them luck and Dennis Johnson. Uh, so we want to wish all those folks. We also want to tell you, hey, I know Kentucky, Tennessee plays tomorrow night, okay? They don't play till 7 o'clock. There will be plenty of time to get home or you can sit out at one of the, the local establishments in Versailles and watch it on a big screen with a bunch of other people going crazy. But beginning tomorrow morning, there will be five regional middle school state playoff games at Community Stadium. Three of them won't involve us, but we'll give you the two that do. 11 o'clock tomorrow morning, our eighth grade losers of one game this year, they're 9-1, and one, will play the Jaguars of Union at 11 o'clock in the morning. So get there, and these guys finished in the top four a year ago, they got to the state semifinals, lost to the eventual state champion in Northern Pulaski. They have a chance to get even further this year because they are in opposite brackets of Northern Pulaski. So we want to root those guys on, and they have only lost one game. But coming up at 5 o'clock on the same night, that'll be the seventh grades turn to shine in their championship game, and they get a conference opponent. They get Georgetown Middle. They get Georgetown Middle. Georgetown okay. Middle will play them. That'll be at 5 p.m. tomorrow night at Community Stadium. And our seventh grade bunch, 10 and 0 on the year. You know, what's that say about the bright spots of uh, Woodford football on their way coming in? And we've actually got some people uh, that we are talking about. We've got some kids that are great, but we also have – some high school, some middle school basketball girls that are coming up, they're doing well. Uh, our cross country teams have done well at the middle school. Our girls' soccer and boys' soccer programs are doing well. I think the boys' basketball program is sp supposed to do well at the middle school. That, folks, is how you build an athletic program. You build it from the ground up. Now, I do know the youth football, I think, are finished or got a couple more weeks to finish. They are doing well as well down there for youth football. So, that's how you build a program, and that's how we enjoy doing what we do. Uh, Brian, of course, is the voice of Community Stadium. He does the public address announcing. Uh, don't know how much longer we're going to keep him around, but we'll hopefully keep him around for a little while to get some of these guys and gals coming up. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Then uh, it keeps me young. It keeps me – I want to do this as long as I can, even though this is year number 39. Wow, Darren, that, that's a <laughs> – 39 years 39. behind the mark. That is fabulous. I tell you well, what. Well, and, uh, and about 15 of those, no, I take that back. About 20 of those, I was down on the sidelines. No, no matter what kind of weather, no matter how cold, how warm, uh, I was down on the sidelines, and I have microphones to prove that I got <laughs> drilled a few times <laughs> on the sidelines. Just, 
Yeah, I tell a story. I know he listens. Buck Stewart over in West Virginia, a coach here for about five years, uh, got me thrown out off the sidelines <laughs> one night because he hollered my name, and the official didn't like that, and he kind of copped an attitude. So he hollered my name because nobody would at tell him where the ball was located after a penalty. Oh, okay. So, so he, then he kept hollering at the official. They wouldn't answer him, so – he hollered my name out, and never, I never got a chance to answer. You know, it could have been the official's name was Darren, too. And Correct. You know, may have, may have just draw a, a raw nerve with that official. Correct. I think he didn't like me because I asked him about a, uh, what, what uh, they were talking with in a, in a communication with several officials, but that, that happens. And, you know, of course, my mom, if she was alive, would probably say, yeah, you ran your mouth. I know that. So, needless to say. This is the UK Sports Medicine High School Game of the Week brought to you by UK Sports Medicine. You can skip the emergency room at UK Sports Medicine's walk-in clinic Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. at their Turflin location just off Harrodsburg Road. And for all you old folks that have been in Central Kentucky for a number of years, that's the old Turflin Mall location. Uh, and I'll even go one better. It's the old McAlpin's building is what it was, is where that's located. <laughs> You know what, I I'm feel really old because I know where it was. <laughs> and I'm showing my age, too, with that. But go see those fine folks because I tell you what, they do some wonderful work. They get you back and keep you in the game. Uh, once you get an injury, they get you right back out. Citizens Commerce Bank, another fine sponsor of ours, Jack Kane Ford. I can't say enough about Jack Kane Ford. I had to – Kelly and I had to move some stuff out of storage and actually close up the storage. I – we didn't get it all in one trip, but we had only rented the U-Haul for a little while, for a certain amount of time. Had to go back and get uh, some more stuff, uh, some smaller stuff. I called Jack Kane. I said, can you help me out? And he said, hey, we got a used vehicle. Uh, doubt we can sell it because it's in such poor shape. Do you want to take it? So I took it and, and did that, and I want to tell Bob Kane, thank you, because not many dealerships will do no, that. No, they wouldn't. And, you know, the Kane family been, has been like that ever since I've lived in. 40-plus years. Two around and, yep. and you know you just you can't speak highly enough of, of well you talk about service they don't just get give you the lip service that goes with it in other words they give you all this lip and talk and then they do something different no they practice what they preach yep. and that's what you want at jack keen ford also woodford family physicians a great place to get all you want as far as medical care for comprehensive care from top to bottom of your of your body with the fine folks at Whitford Family Physicians for every member of your family. Doesn't matter. Young, old, doesn't matter. They can take care of you over there. Also, for Sales Brewing Company, proud to say that every ingredient raised right in Whitford County. That includes, I mean, all the produce and, and uh, uh, vegetables you eat also includes the meat beef. that Absolutely. comes from right there. Uh, also, Kentucky Farm Bureau, big on commitment. Can't say enough about my boy Courtney Roberts there. I mean, he is he is always on it and, and just make sure that I am taking care of him. We get the national anthem here in just a moment from McClellan Field in Independence. The Simon Kenton Marching Band with our national anthem here in Independence, Kentucky. And we're about, i got to lean out the press box here. We're about nine minutes away from the opening kickoff. Uh, we are 
not where we would normally sit in a lot of uh, stadiums. We are actually on the visiting side, just behind the visiting stands, uh, which is wonderful. We get away from all the, the other stuff going on on the other side and, and things like that. But we have our own booth, and we are ready for some football here in Independence. And uh, You know, that's a nice scoreboard, too. It is. It's a beautiful I mean, scoreboard. I, I, I walked by and heard all this humming. It's all the electric it's going the into electric. it. Yeah. I thought something was getting ready to blow up, but then I looked up and saw the video board above it, and that's I tell you what, that's, a, that's, a, that's a really nice it's video board. It's a really board. beautiful, yeah, it's a beautiful, that'd look, beautiful facility here. That looked nice in Community Stadium. Wouldn't it, though? Would. We'd have to figure out a way to keep it off of that hillside and getting a lightning strike because yeah. score, the scoreboard we have has taken so many lightning strikes <laughs> because it's, it's on that hillside. But I uh, also want to thank. Mr. Appliance over in Georgetown, Kentucky. Uh, I'm proud that I keep everything in Woodford County except for this business, yes. But guess what? Both owners, Chris Farmer and his wife, Catherine, Jitry Farmer, uh, both Woodford County alum. So, And Chris played football for the Jackets in his days. Uh, so if you want expert appliance repair from a friendly company, go see them and call them, and they'll take care of you in a friendly, swift, and efficient manner. Also, 84 Lumber, all you need to build a dream home under one roof. Right there on Markham Drive, just off US 60, J&B Marathon Cafe. I will promote their breakfast because there's none better in, Amen. in Central Kentucky. I'll put it up against anybody. Uh, J&B Marathon, they have great food that you just have to go out in the community and talk about to people. So I'll be there about 730 in the morning for my biscuits and gravy. There you go. Uh, that's usually my go-to. Also, Jason Go State Farm, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And Showplace Realty, whether it's a home, business, or commercial property, we get it done. That's their motto down there at Showplace Realty. It's same location pretty much for about the last 30 years. They've also been in business in 40 years. Also, Carroll Floor Covering. Can't forget Steve Carroll, who's at home listening tonight. Um, Carroll Floor Covering. They've been in business for 40-plus years. And uh, he's actually been a couple of different locations. This location, I think, is for the last 25 years. Uh, right there on Lexington Road in Versailles. They can get you taken care of whatever flooring you need, whether it be – you could be for your man cave. When you get in trouble and they got a man cave on the back of your garage, they can help you take care of that as well. They can take care of your flooring out there. So go see Steve Carroll and those fine folks. Also, Falling Springs Rec Center. Fitness, family, fun. All in one place. Uh, go out and see uh, the facility. It's a wonderful facility. Uh, got a walking track above the, uh, I think it's what, five basketball courts, I think. Five, five full court basketball courts. courts. I think they're actually 94 feet. They're actually college regulation size, I believe, too. And, and, and the way I struggled walking up these bleachers, I probably need to find one of these. Well, it might be a little tough there. Uh, I, I had the same issue, although I went for a really nice walk with our dog, Roman, today. Uh, County 9, right next door to Woodford County High School. If you want anything, you got a logo, they can put it on anything pretty much. Your shirts, your uh, sweats, your your jacket, your briefcase. Uh, I got a headset case they put, uh, put my logos on. Uh, they put it on my case to carry my equipment in. They can do it. And if you don't have a logo, they want you to think outside the box. So their, their slogan is really simple. Unbridled creativity is welcome. They want you to think outside the box and come up with something and see if they can develop a logo that you've got in mind. So that's County 9. Well, great folks over there. Also, work out anytime in the Woodford Plaza. Brett Least, seven years in business. I remember when he played football for me at the middle school level. <laughs> that's uh, Getting old there, Brian. I'm going to say that's been a while back. <laughs> been now, a while man. back now, yeah. He's been in business seven years, the same location there. Work out anytime. Your fitness, your schedule. You can do it there 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I uh, don't know if they're closed on holidays. I think they may still be open on the holidays as well. So, you know, that'll work. And then we've got a couple of more. Thoroughbred Square, specifically front row tickets. You've got a sporting event, a concert, anywhere in the country you want to go to and you're having trouble finding tickets, get in touch with these guys. They can find them for you as well as the yoga studio downstairs. I couldn't do that. I'd be stuck in, uh, in a pretzel mode and, and not get out of it. Uh, but they got a yoga studio down there. They also – BJC Traditions down there. Uh, Kelly took her mom in there, and I, it took us an hour to get out of there. Uh, thank goodness we didn't buy anything because 
we'd have had to have been in trouble. But they go down there as well and see those guys. Also, about a week and a half from now, we'll be putting officials in business. James K., our Woodford County Judge Executive, out there for the people. It doesn't matter what age. I've seen him with senior citizens doing things. I've seen him at the high schools. He's been at elementary schools doing things. He's always out for anybody and everybody of Woodford County. Re-elect James K. on November the 8th. And then the guy next to me over here, call him. If you got some money issues, you need to get them straight, call him. He'll help you get things straight, especially with the way things are going in the country today. You meet, Everybody needs some, some help and guidance. Go see that. And we'll take care of it uh, at Family Wealth Group. And, Brian, you got a phone number there? 859-309-0349. Good deal. That's Brian Staples, folks, and they'll help you out. And if you need to know what Family Wealth Group, I'll, I'll drop a name real quick. Jeff Shepard's involved. That'll help, right? <laughs> you know, Jeff, <laughs> Jeff's one of our owners. and He's and a good dude. He, he is absolutely one of the hardest-working individuals. Yep. I've ever been associated with, and, and, and it tells you, it tells you, he come from Georgia, Atlanta, a suburb of Georgia, Peachtree City is where he comes from, and he's made his home here in Kentucky. I kind of helped too, though. It made, uh, made it easy. Okay, Jerry Harris, they're getting ready to honor the late Jerry Harris. I believe Jerry played football at UK, didn't he? Yes, he did. I think he did. And a 1969 graduate of Simon Kenton High School. His boys continue to play at Simon. And two of players at Simon, number 44, senior Aiden Harris, and his brother, freshman Grayson Harris, are joining the captains for the coin toss. The Harris family has continued on Jerry's legacy supporting the Simon Kenton football team and booster program. Steve Harris just flipped the coin for tonight's coin toss. Thank you again to Cindy Harris and the Harris family for all you do. Great. Uh, That's quite an honor. Great for an honor. They play, with the Harris you, you, know, you got the two, the two sons and the, uh, the wife. Uh, actually, they got three sons out there and the wife uh, tossing the coin. One is a, a senior, one's a freshman, one's already graduated. So. <laughs> Um, they keep it going, and you can tell the older one, this uh, Aiden Harris, he'll be 44 in blue, having a little tough time hearing uh, that about his dad over the PA. He was a little, struggling a little bit with it. That would be really difficult yep. for, for, for a young man to be there. Well, I tell you what, Simon Kenton takes the field as they're dressed in their royal blue or Kentucky blue if you're a U.K. fan. With the white helmets, the white pants, and the jackets come onto the field across the way from the left side. White helmets, white jerseys with the black pants looking for win number 10 on the year. And how about this, Brian? Win number 23 out of the last 24. Wow, that's pretty that's impressive. A pretty, that's a pretty good run for Woodford County. And, uh, you know, we'll see. I uh, didn't see who won the toss. We were too busy trying to pick up the, the uh, public address announcer who was giving us the uh, – information on Mr. Harris, and uh, we'll see what happens here tonight as Woodford County looks to go 10-0 and and head to the, the playoffs next Friday night unblemished, and it has been a heck of a ride over the last two years with well, Coach Dennis what, Johnson. It has been fun, and, and, and I should have been watching for the coin toss, but I was trying to look up. Simon Kenton's roster because they yeah, they gave us a small one. And it was here just a moment ago. Yeah, we'll flip and the way this is gone, I, we can come up with it here. Heck, I may have. I don't think I pitched it, but let me see what we got here. It'll be Simon Kenton receiving the kickoff, and I believe what Woodford County the way that normally works. Woodford County wins the toss. They usually elect to defer their option to the second half. It'll be Simon Kenton receiving the kickoff. And back deep, it'll be Chase Williams, the senior wide receiver for... Taking off for Woodford County is number 10. Simon Sawyer Kenton Ford. and Sawyer Ford, the senior place kicker for the Jackets, will put the toe to the leather here in just a moment. 
Let's see if Sawyer continues this record of kicking it in the end zone. He's kicked a bunch on the touchbacks this year, and Ford approaches the football, and he'll drive it down the near side. It'll come to Williams, and he'll let it bounce and go into the end zone. It'll be first and 10, Simon Kenton from their own 20-yard line, and the quarterback will be Trace Crone. We'll call his name a lot tonight. He is the second leading rusher for the Pioneers. 635 yards for the senior this year. 11 touchdowns on the ground. He's behind him will be Jaden Lawson. And Lawson goes 5'9", five, five 160 pounds. He's a senior. He also has 11 scores, but playing in only his sixth game tonight. Been out with some injuries. They give it to Lawson, running up the middle, cuts it back, and gets out to the 25-yard line. A gain of five on the stop for Whitford County, Caleb Brown and Christian Potts. It also says Sturgis brought him down as well, so three jackets there. Gain of five, second and five. No huddle. They give it off to Lawson, picks his hole, and gets a yard to the 26. Met by Jackson, uh, excuse me, that is Davion Sturgis. Along with Preston Stacy and Caleb Brown. So again, Jackets got to really get to the ball. Third and four now. They actually gained two. Gave him the 27. That's a generous spot. That was Crone, a generous spot. Back to throw. Throws out here in the flat. That's Williams. Missed tackle. 40, 45, midfield into Whitford County territory. Cuts it back. Has room to run. And slides down. At the Woodford County 36, and a guy had a shot in it was DeBrinch Johnson, but he just missed him, whiffed him. It was a first down, but the Simon Pi Pioneers get a first down at the Woodford County 38. First and 10, opening drive. They give it off to, nope, Crone keeps it, runs left, gets inside the 35 to the 34 for a gain of four. It'll be second down and six. Davion Sturgis with the tackle. Four, and they really go six. fast under second-year head coach Roy Lucas. Yeah, they have not gone to a huddle. They give it off to Lawson, picks his way, and he gets a yard down to the 32. So it'll be third and short, actually third and four for Simon Kenton. On the opening drive of the ball game, we are just now two minutes, four, uh, minute 45 seconds in. Micaiah Smith made a good tackle there. Throne, back to throw, looks out in the flat for Williams, who has it. He's going to be dropped back at the 31-yard line. It'll be a couple of yards shy of the first down. It'll be fourth down and short for Simon Kenton. Fourth and three. Aiden Nelson on the cover there, Darren, and looked really good making that forcing him out of bounds. Crone with the signals. Now looks over to the sideline. There will snap the football. Crone gives it off to Lawson. He's hit in the backfield by Sturgis and stops at the 31. That was a good stand by the Woodford defense there. Big stand. And the linebacker, the Will linebacker, or weak side linebacker, Davion Sturgis on the tackle for Woodford County. The Jackets give up a big play to Williams. And then Boulder next. And they get him on downs. And Woodford County will take over first and 10 from their own 31-yard line with 9.58 to play in the first quarter. We've got a nice scoreboard, but we got to lean out of the press gotta box to out. see gotta it. got to be careful. You know, there's a great crowd here for yeah, Woodford. Nice crowd tonight. for Woodford. We have a pretty much everybody, every seat filled right below us here on a pretty good uh, size Visiting stance. They pitch back to Maxberry, cuts it up. He'll get three out to the 39, 34-yard uh, line. Good block to get him around the corner by Makai Smith. It was a good block, but I was holding my breath. I was too. <laughs> it was close. It was close, and I'm watching the official. And we will say this too. Uh, Tonight should be the night, but Preston Stacy is 10 yards away from tying the school's all-time rushing record for yards in a career. 11, he needs to break it. Back to throw is Nason. He'll step up, throw deep here for Makai Smith. Get one foot got it in. Down at yep, the Simon right. Kenton 37-yard line. 
That's a gain of 29, and it's first and 10 Yellow Jackets from the Simon Kitten 37. A nice catch in getting that right foot down. That, that was great body control. That by right here below there. us, too. Yeah. So we had a great look at it. First and 10 Yellow Jackets. They send two receivers to the left side, the wing back to that side. And the fullback is Stacy. They finally, nope, pitch it back to uh -oh. Max Berry, and he turns it over. He tried to run before he had it, and Simon Kinsey gets it on the giveaway. That is four giveaways in the last two weeks for Woodford County. They had three last week with uh, East Jessman to make it. I, I'll tell you what, we'll go back even further than that. We'll go That's back to the seven yeah. in three games for Woodford County to give away. They had two interceptions and a fumble giveaway and against Collins and still one. Well, we're just gonna we're gonna knock on the door and ask the defense to step up one more time. Yep. Well, the defense usually what they have they have Leighton Starks at the left defensive end or Fund uh, Lightning. We have Grant Stunt Garrison on the right defensive end or Thunder. They give it off on Lawson to with a stretch play. Boy, they got a man. Boy, they missed a hold on the far man. side on Chase Wilson. He just grab uh, Williams just grabbed a hold of the wide of uh, the uh, Joker or outside linebacker Preston Stacy. He's talking to the White Hat now. Give him eight, but that was helped by a hold that was missed. They fake it. Crone runs right. Big hole up the middle. He has the first down inside the Woodford County 40. We have a late flag. Well, we're going to have too many players on the field because Stacy was trying to get off the field. Uh, but the flag came after the play was dead. Well, here's the thing, too. You get so many quickness going on. They made a substitution, did Simon Kenton. Now, the, the rule states you, if the offense substitutes, the defense gets a chance to substitute. They did not allow Woodford County to do that. It's illegal substitution. It's going to be a first down for Simon Kenton, but I disagree, though. I mean, that that is a play that You've got needs to, to be looked at again. Yeah, once once the offense makes that substitution, defense has got to have the ability. Woodford County's defense being asked to come up big again, and Crone is dropped. He recovered his own fumble, but the, a loss. For the Pioneers at their own 46 yard line. At the 46, line. that's a loss of about eight. Crone back to throw, rolls left, throws high, incomplete. Third. The pass was intended for Williams, kind of flew over his head. Quick shout out to Bo Morgan. Bo, thank you for sending over the copy of the roster. Yeah, we had it up here. It just disappeared. It, it's one of those things that just, it, it grew legs and walked away. Well, I've been in this business long enough to know that weird things happen on the road to broadcast the truth. Two receivers here to the near side. One back to the right. Crone steps up, steps up, throws high. Intercepted by Jasper Johnson. Headed the other direction. He has room down the far sideline. Into Simon Kill territory. And We'll step out of bounds at the Pioneers, 45. Boy, we've had a lot of action we have inside the first two possessions for you to see. <laughs> Jasper, just, Jasper Johnson just standing there. Hit him, red, hit him right dead in the bed, bread basket. 8-13 to play. Made a, great, made a great interception on that. I mean, it was a missed throw by Cronin, but Johnson was standing right there, was able to get it, and made a return of about 45 yards. Woodford's going to have the ball first and 10 at Simon Kenton's 45-yard line as the offense trots back out on the field uh, to get ready to take over. If you see the camera bouncing, it's not what we're doing. We are attached to the stand, so when the Woodford the County crowd starts stomping, it's shaking the booth. So it's nothing wrong with the camera or the view. It's just that, that situation. They give it off to Stacy, running left. Gets down to the 41-yard line. It'll be a gain of four. It'll be second down and six for Woodford County from the Simon Kenton 41. Scoreless in the first quarter with just now under eight minutes to play 
in quarter number one. So, Darren, what you're saying is when that camera's bouncing, it's not Kelly getting excited over the game. It's not Kelly doing that. No, it's not. It's, it's the it's, crowd down there. We've got a great we got a great County crowd representation here. We, below us. We want we want the camera to bounce all Thank night you. long. So, it, you know, you know how sometimes you get those, even on the big dogs, Fox and, and ESPN, they get those crowds going, the crowd, and it blows it. They give it off deep to Stacy. We're gonna have we're gonna have illegal procedure in the backfield. And we have two guys moving at once, and Whitford County calls it themselves again. Take it back five yards and make it second down and eleven. It'll be back past the stick, so it's second down and eleven now for Whitford County from the Simon Kenton 46. And you might hear the crowd below us saying he was in the neutral zone. I did see a defender get in there, and they didn't call it. High school, all you got to do is break the plane to be in the neutral zone. There has to be no contact. No contact. High school, you know, like at the college level. Woodford County. Well, we'll be able to tell because I'm, I'm standing right dead on the ball yeah. right now. With and we ball. are right on the 50-yard line when it comes to our camera. We got a great view with the camera tonight. They throw out here in the flat to Makai Smith. Oh, that was a great block. 40. Stiff arm gets the first down inside the Simon Kitten 35. Down to the Pioneers 31 yard line. I tell you what, Max Berry made a great block. He has done that right out many here times on the corner. over yeah. the last five or six games. He was not, did not play last week. Nope. Uh, wasn't in uniform. I didn't even see him. In, I didn't even see him on the, the sidelines. He may have been out with an illness, but Woodford County with a big first down. And it's first and 10 Yellow Jackets from the Pioneers 31 yard line. Well, and Smith wasn't going to be denied getting that first down. They give it off to Stacy. Big hole. First down yardage to the Simon Kenton. Well, I hope they're going to mark him shy of the 21. Are you serious? Looked like he got to the 20. I thought he got to they're at least the, the 21. 22. And they moved him back. Yeah, 22, 23. So. Well, I'm 0 for 1 in spots with the stripes tonight. He got nine. Guess what, folks? There's your all time your Yellow Jacket rushing leader. 13 so far here on two carries tonight for Stacy. Well over 3,000 yards now in his career. They give it to him again. He has the first down inside the 20. They're going to mark him at the 19, according to the near side official. Looks like he got as low as the 18. But it doesn't matter. Enough for a first down for Whitford County. First and 10 jackets from the 19 for of South Oldham, of, South Oldham, of Simon Kent. I got South Oldham on the brain tonight. <laughs> well, they do have... Same, similar colors to well, South Oldham. So. Yeah, but South Oldham's that navy blue or midnight blue with that forest green. Yeah. They throw out in the flat to Nelson. He catches it inside the 15, inside the 10. He'll be thrown out of bounds, maybe a little bit extra way out of bounds, but they'll mark it at the looks like the six. I'll tell you something. White Crow made that yardage there the with that thing. block. Just stayed back, made yep. the block as the ball was coming in. The same play to the left side that we saw from Kenya Maxberry White Crow with the same block. Leland Taylor not in uniform tonight. We got notification from his father who's at home tonight. Sick is Leland. We hope he's back next week. Crow in motion. They fake it. Busted play. No, they gave it off to Stacy. Uh -oh, he fumbled like the football. Loose. And it looks like Simon Kitten got it. Or did Whitford County get it back? I don't know. There's an awful lot of blue down there motioning. Simon Kitten got there it. it. Another Simon turnover for ball. Whitford County. I don't know if, if Stacy ever got the football. It looked like maybe a, a exchange that got to the hip of Stacy. And I don't know if Nason got it in there good enough or if Nason was trying to pull it or what. Well, I don't think that was Stacy because was that, he's just now trotting on the oh, field. Was that Graham Hodge? Must have been Graham Hodge. It must have been Graham that came in. So I nonetheless, tell who it looked the like ball. maybe a botched handoff between the two. Nope. The way Coach Johnson reacted, Hodge, and the way Hodge's body language is, he must have just gave up the football. But I guarantee you, Hodge won't do it again because no, he, he, he is a young man that takes things and learns. It's first and 10, Simon Kenton. We've had three turnovers in the last two possessions. Under six to play. They give it off to Lawson deep, and he'll get back to the two. Nope, that's not Lawson. It's Blyer, Caleb Blyer. He's the third leading ball carrier on the year for Simon Kenton. He only has 300 yards rushing. Prone. Gives it off to Blyer. Nope, he'll keep it. He has the first down big hold. He gets that over the 20 to about the 21, 22-yard line. 
He made a really good fake on that handoff and quarterback keeper just right up the gut. So the Jackets. Croner on the keep again. Around the right, around the right end. And Woodford County looking really nice on offense. The problem is we've given up two fumbles. We've given up two fumbles, and, and we've got to learn to hold hold on to the ball the further we go into the season. This is Darrell Turner on the carry. He gets out to the 25. That'll be a gain of two. It'll be third and about six now for Simon Kenton. Lady the only Starks the, on the tackle. Yeah, the there. best run running that they've had has been from the cornerback Crone. He hurt Woodford last year running the ball. Mix up in the backfield. Crone will pull it and get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's all. Turner and Blyer ran together the two backs on either side of. We've got a we've got a Simon Kenton oh player my. down. Is that a shoe or is that his ankle? Oh my. I believe it's, that's it's just that's putting the shoe, shoe back on. I was okay. thinking, boy, the way he was acting, that is, that's the big Division I recruit for Simon Kenton. So, Abba Salim being recruited right now heavily by Kentucky and Purdue. He's only a junior. Crone going for it on fourth. They're going for it on fourth down. Are you serious here? Fourth and six. Fourth and six. Nope, they're going to punt. No, here we go. Now he's going to punt. He'll kick it, get it away. It'll hit at the Woodford County 43 and take a pioneer bounce. It'll come to rest at the Woodford County 32. I was going to say, holy moly, they're going to go for it. Well, you and I both looked up about the same time, and yeah, quarterback's thought, still in position. To, I thought Roy Lucas was channeling <laughs> Hal Mummy. Or for, for Woodford County Middle School folks that know, that he was channeling Rusty Parks. I remember Coach Parks went for it not once but twice on fourth down and significant, I should say, from inside our own five. Uh, you know, sometimes <laughs> you just got to go for it. Uh, he, did, he turned around Coach Carr and said, hey, our defense is good. We'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> we actually won the ball game comfortably, but I know Coach Carr was about ready to have a heart attack. Mason will bring Nelson in motion. He avoids. Oh, it just. Yeah. All he needed was that one little seam there. And Aiden Harris complaining about somebody holding him, but there wasn't anybody holding him. He just whiffed on trying to grab Aiden Nelson. Nelson avoided contact. It's second down and six. With 3.15 to play in the opening quarter, in case you joined us, folks. We've had a whole lot of action. We had a, a Simon Kent with an early drive, stopped on downs. Whitford County then fumbled it back to him. Then an interception from... Crone picked off by Jasper Johnson, and then Woodford knocking on the door for the game's first score, fumbled the football inside the five. They throw out in the flat to Makai Smith, breaks the tackle, gets the first down at the Simon Kenton 47. That is a mismatch and a half over here yes, on the sideline. And I think that Coach Johnson's going to take advantage of it every chance he can. Uh, Makai Smith goes 6-2. And the young man for Simon Kenton, I think this he, corner here, Goes five nine. He he reminds he reminds me a whole lot of me, and that's not five nine. That's about five 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 six. <laughs> well, they listed with five nine. They give it off. Nope. Nason keeps it. Cuts it up the middle. Big hole inside the Simon Kitten forty five down to the thirty eight yard line. Great read by the sophomore Nason. And just as we talk about that young man Luke Scheiber from Simon Kitten, he makes the tackle. Yeah, Had saves a touchdown. He did because Nason had a hit of steam, and that's what I love about Nason. Once he decides to cut it up, he's at full speed. First and 10, Whitford County from the Simon Kenton 39. I called it the 38, and, of course, they move it back to the 39. 0 for 2 now on spots. I'm going to give up on that. Bowling looking to come in. They throw out to N Nelson, gets a block. He goes outside of the block of Jabari Alexander instead of cutting it out. And, and – for you young folks, if you're making a block, don't just hit them and, and, and watch. Keep driving Just them. hit it, driving, keep going. Keep driving them. He got one. It'll be second down and nine at the 38 of Simon Kenton. 
Had a lot of action here in the first half, uh, first quarter of action, and no score. Yeah, this is one of the few times that, you know, as we're trickling down to about a minute 30 left in the first quarter. UK Sports Medicine Game of the Week here from Independence. Jackets and Pioneers give it off to Stacy. He'll hammer it up in there and get down to the, they mark it at the 35. This guy on the side here, he's assuming the ball's at the 36. Well, that's, and that's, that's where they, where mark they marked it. it. But it looks like the linesman on the far side is inside the 36, but it's third and long for Whitford County. Yeah, this is going to be a long seven yards to have to go get. Yes. Whitford County leading. Or not leading, but no score with a minute to go. 66. Been a fast first quarter. He's all sides again. No call. Mason cuts Mason's it up. Got a 35 three. 30. Inside to Simon Kenton to the 25 yard line. Simon Kenton got off. Again, had a guy fall in the neutral zone and no flag no on the far flag. side. So I don't know what you're looking at. But the Jackets have first and 10 from the Simon Kenton 25. Jackets moving again. 40 seconds of the clock moving into scoreless first quarter, but had a lot of action. Jackets looking to go 10-0 in the regular season. This would be a big win on the road against a quality opponent. They give it deep to Stacy. Gets around the right side, run out of bounds, and gets a little extra push, about three yards out of bounds. And no flag coming, but he gets about four. Well, It'll be but second down and six. He did get a little push, but it was more of a little love tat than it was hardly anything. Well, we've seen flags for a lot less than that. Well, we have, <laughs> but, I mean, it's. And we don't have a lot of room between the sidelines and the track that goes around McClellan Field here at Simon Kenton High School. So you better hope you're on your sidelines because your teammates will grab you before you get to that track. You can slide for a while. Second down and five. They gave him five. Nason trying to pull it. And he gives it to Stacy. He gets two. It'll be third and about four. And that may be the end of the first quarter. It's going to be, man, a whole lot packed into that first 12 minutes of action. But no score here from Independence. Yeah, you know, for a lot, well, for the kind of action that we had. We should have had some points. No on the board. score. We should have had some points. For either side. But um, that's okay. It's been a good football game so been far. Been a good football we game, and both expecting. teams, Simon Kenton really uh, fired up to get uh, what they expect to be a win here at home, to go 7-3 and three on the year and, and really cap off a pretty good career for a senior class uh, that uh, also includes a win over Highlands. Actually, a couple of wins over Highlands in their four years. So... Uh, not a lot of people can say that, but we have a lot of uh, football left. We have 36 more minutes to play. Uh, the Jackets could have at least one touchdown on the board, uh, but we've given, a, given it away twice tonight, and that is something we cannot do uh, beginning next week. we got to clean up that end of things. Yeah, we're going to have to, going forward, we're going to have to hold on to the football because it's going to be harder and harder to overcome turnovers as we move into the playoffs. Not good news on the other two fronts. Scott County 14, Lexington Catholic nothing. Wow. And Douglas leads Boyle County 9 nothing. I would suspect the Douglas Bull County game is going to be a really good game yeah, before I, it's I, over. That uh, boy, uh, Frederick Douglas has been known as a quick starter. We'll see what Boyle can do with them. And surprising score, though, from the Catholic game. It's got, they throw deep, caught, touchdown, touchdown, Yellow Jackets. And that is Makai Smith or is that Aiden Nelson? That's, That's Aiden, Aiden Nelson. Nelson. Again, they, Aiden goes up. That height really pays off for him. Keeps his body under control, comes down with the ball, fighting for it. So that was a, a great reception by Nelson. And a nice throw from Andrew Nason to Aiden Nelson. And they pick again on Schober over there at 5-9. Sawyer Ford with the extra point out of the hold of Nason. The kick is up, and the kick is good. With 11.55 to play before halftime, it's Woodford County 7. And Simon Kitten, nothing 
here on the UK Sports Medicine Game of the Week, and that is UK Sports Medicine. I tell you what, that group up there does wonders, not just for Woodford County uh, High School, Woodford County Middle School sports. They do wonders for other sport, uh, other schools around Central Kentucky. I think uh, uh, Rob Ullery told me they cover 40-some-odd schools. Wow. 40 schools. Uh, and last <laughs> night he was in uh, a couple of nights ago because it was I mean, last night he was in, uh, where was he, Bracken County covering a, 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 a junior varsity football covering game. a junior varsity game. Yeah. That, you know, that, so, you know. Uh, that, that, that is true dedication. Dedication, dedication and they get you back out. If you want to be tre- if you ever wonder what kind of treatment the Kentucky Wildcats get, Go see those fine folks at UK Sports Medicine because they treat the Wildcat football and athletic programs. Get you back in the game quickly. Oh, I forget the scoreboard. Thanks, Brian. That's all right. We got Sawyer Fords teed it up, about to about to kick off to Chase Williams, who's back deep for Simon Kenton. Seven nothing. Oh, a little squib kick here. That's scrambling on the ground. Ball's still loose. loose. Still loose. Ball's loose. Looks and like Simon And I think Simon, Simon Kenton, Kenton got, got it back at about the 24-yard line. That thing was. It took just the perfect hop as it approached that player and bounced right up off his shoulder. Well, we've seen that thing. We've seen that oblong football at times this year take really nice bounces up to people. But more often than not, that's what you see it happen. Sometimes it's just a cruel bounce, and that's what it was there. Yeah. But uh, the up back came up from Simon Kenton and very quickly jumped on the ball for him. It'll be first and ten for Simon Kenton from their own 24-yard line. Woodford County leading 7-0 here in the second quarter. Crone back to throw. Throws across the middle high for Williams, and he can't come down with it. If you want to know when Chase Crone goes back to throw the football, who he's going to look for, it's that guy. 70% of the time he's throwing the ball this season, Crone has looked for Williams. Second and 10. They ride it on the RPO. This is Lawson around the right side. Breaks a tackle, gets up over the 30, and we'll get to the 34. What's a pleasant spot. He slid to the 34. They're going to give him 10 yards in the first down. Holy smokes. Well, Caleb, Caleb Brown came up with a shoestring tackle there. That yes, he broke a tackle in the backfield of somebody. I don't know who that was. Was that Makai Smith he broke? I believe it was Makai that, that tried to bring him down. Caleb got him by the shoestrings, got him down. Crone throws across the middle and is complete. That's Nathan Kitchens. He's the second leading receiver. Once again, good enough for another Savikin Pioneer first down. And it's first and ten, Simon Kenton, as we come back to play quickly. They give it off to Lawson. Nothing. Nope, that's Crone. He gets nothing. Christian Ponce was right there in the hole. Uh, brought him down quickly. And now it's Leighton Starks, a little bit slow to get up. Looks like hopefully this the wind knocked out of him. No gain for Crone. Yeah, I believe it could be yeah. the, way he, the way he's laying he's there. Acting, and, I've, and I've been there, done that. You get the wind knocked out of you, and then you get somebody leaning over you going, tell okay. me what hurts. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to tell you what's hurting. You can't You Can't, can't talk. get your breath back, and, yeah. Looks like they are talking to him. He may have taken a helmet in the solar plexus. Now they're looking down at the lower extremity, so we'll – Coach Dennis Johnson's in the way. We also want to welcome back to the fold and glad he's back feeling better. Coach Alvis Johnson heard uh, that he was at the game last week with East Chessman. He was in the, the car watching the game from a warm vehicle. Glad he's doing better. And, Coach, we hope to see you back at the stadium soon. Starks will stand up. Looks like he's going to favor that left ankle. Yeah, it looks like he is. He's kind of getting off the field very gingerly. Can't put any weight down on that ankle right now. He's starting to put a little little weight on it, so that's a little bit better. We'll get him over here to the training table and walk or work his magic and get this young man back ready to play. 16 to nothing. Douglas. 
over Boyle County after one quarter of play. Come back to action. Let's see what we've got. He's looking for. Crone throws it out. It's caught. First down at the Whitford County 43-yard line, but we have a flag. Here at the fifth, at the 48-yard line in Whitford or in Simon Kenton territory. Down to the Whitford County 42-yard line. Blades on the reception because he was looking for. Crone finally was looking for a different receiver. They're saying it's on Whitford County. Wait a minute. Now the white hat goes and talks to the umpire. Let's see what we've got. One, two, three. It's not 12. It's 11 on the field in white. Now they're going to go. Now they're talking to the far side line judge. Went to a football game, and the guys in the stripes turned out to be politicians. Well, looks Illegal like sub again. Now it looks like they call him, was it illegal sub or call him face mask? That's what I thought he motioned was face mask. How is it a face mask here from the linesman? I tell you what, this lines judge over here, he's turned to the guy with the box, and that's the guy with the, the numbers on that for you that don't know what the box is. He has fist bumped him three times. Oh, my goodness gracious. He said he grazed a face mask, and it's on Aiden Nelson. Nonetheless, it's first and 10 from the Whitford County 38-yard line. They give it off to Blyer. Big hole right side. He gets inside the 30. And Selma just got by with a nice little tackle of, I believe that was Christian Potts. First and 10 now. That's right, actually second and eight, two yards shy. They give it off to Blyer. Right side. He'll get to the 29. And that's all. Yeah, that was a Christian Ponce on that tackle. Third and one now for Simon Kent from the Whitford County 29-yard line. We've bowed our necks several times tonight so far. They give it to Blyer, running right, first down, big hole. Down to the 25-yard line. Down to the 25, good enough for number Simon Kent, Pioneer, first down. Pioneers pick up another first down at the Whitford County 25 and a timeout, Whitford County. I tell you what, Coach Dennis Johnson he looks like he's going to talk with his defense, but I tell you what, he has been having a running conversation with a line judge here on this near side. And I think what, he's, what Dennis is trying to do right now is get his guys refocused on – their, their jobs that they're doing. Because right now, I think what's happening is is they are being either talked to by Simon Kenton or they are being distracted by what is going on with the officiating crew. Well, because I, they have been, the officiating crew about every play has pulled, had, a, had their uh, self in one of the Whitford County players' ears talking to them about something. So I don't know if that, and that's more of a uh, line thing that Dennis is doing with his two linebackers, in Hodge and in Bug. It'll be first and 10, Simon Kenton from the Whitford County 25. Crone, back to throw, looks across the middle for Galbraith, it's knocked away. Makai Smith came up, put him, popped him right in the back. Made a good contact on that. Timed, timed it just, just right. right. Second and 10, Second and ten from Whitford County's 25. Jackets lead 7 to nothing with 9.36 and the clock arrested on the incompletion. They give it off to Lawson. He'll stutter step and then Ponce plants it. Ponce is right there for him. At the 22. That's the thing about Christian Ponce. At 285, Good lateral he movement can move laterally as quick as they come. Third and seven. Orberson. They try to get it. They get it across. Caught by Kitchens. First and goal. Simon Kenton from the Woodford County seven-yard line. Make it the eight. It's a good pass. Good route run. Just got the right position to be able to, to receive that ball. Crone keeps it. Runs right up the middle. Gets down to the one. 
And I tell you what, they are doing a whole lot of double team blocking, and, and I'm not sure, but that looked to me like Ponce got maybe chop blocked, but he's up and rooted. Second down and goal from the one. Throne runs left, goes into the end zone for a touchdown. You know, I think, I think right now, this offense, this offense, hurry up offense, whatever you want to call it, is is giving the Woodford defense a little bit of trouble. They're having it a hard is. time getting set and, it is. and hitting their holes. And here's the thing. Woodford County has seen it before because that's what West Jessman would like to do. That's what – oh, my. They, they throw, and the two-point conversion is good. But I tell you what, Crone is doing a stomp twice, and that's – that's making it. And they cut the touch, the jackets sleeping, eight to seven. But that shows you that Coach Lucas is a little worried about the Woodford County offense being able to move the football on him to go for two this early in the ball game. Well, I think he's not only doing that, but he's also trying to set a little bit of a tone that, that we're going to, we're going to get points when we can get points, yeah. how we can get points. But if you don't get that, now you got to chase that the rest of the game. That's true. But and that puts you in a tough situation. they got a good kicker in, in Petty. Petty is an excellent place kicker himself. So uh, you, you take it off his foot, and now you, you put yourself in a situation, though. I mean, I'll, it's a gutsy call if you get it, and it will look brilliant. But if you don't get it, now you got people over there in blue and white going, what was he thinking? You know, well, that, That's the life of a coach. And it'll be Cole Garrett to tee it up. He's the backup place kicker for Simon Kenton. And back deep is Kenyon Maxberry and Garrett Lucas. Garnett will kick it. And he'll squib it. And it comes to Wyatt Crow at the 30. And dancing and carrying on and gets up over the 35 to the 37 yard line. Don't dance. Just when when they squib it like that, and it's and, and you've got from the hash mark to the sideline, scoop it up and head toward the sideline just as hard as you can go, and go north and south. He wanted to dance a little bit toward the midfield. You just call those I call those happy feet. Woodford County trails now eight to seven, with eight thirty eight to play before halftime here in Independence, Kentucky. Simon Kenton and Woodford County meeting for the, I believe the sixth time. Woodford County owes a 3-1 advantage, a 3-2 advantage over the Pioneers. They fake it. Mason back to throw. Has a man wide open down the middle of the field. That's Jabari Alexander. Catches it at the 29-yard line. He was wide open. Forty yards on the pass completion well, to Jamari was, Alexander. That was a good way to get get out of your own territory, get the ball down to and get momentum back, to get a little bit of momentum back, get some get some excitement going back. You can tell that the that the Woodford fans are, are back in this game. Max Berry in motion. They pitch back to him, running right, has an alley, cut it up inside the thirty to about the twenty-five yard line. Nope, they're going to give him the 26. That is I tell seven. you. <laughs> I tell you, I give up. Aiden Harris on the tackle for Simon Kinn. They got him to the 26, so it's second and six. Jackets, big answer on the first play from scrimmage, a 40-yard pass completion from Nason to Alexander. Throws out here in the flat. That's Nelson. Catches it, breaks a tackle, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Yellow Jackets. They're back on top. He just shrugged off the defender and said, not today. Well, defender tried to tried to bring him down high. Can't do that. You, you, you're not going to bring him down high. And he grabbed a full of jersey, and, and Aiden just shook him off and straight to the end zone he went. How about this, three plays, 70 yards. Now you get an understanding of why Coach Lucas over there was going for two. And a minute 17 off the clock. <laughs> Ford's extra point is good, and it's Woodford County 14. Simon Kenton eight with 721 to play before halftime. 
Yellow Jackets really answered the bell real quickly. Well, that was good to see because they, the defense – Defense could probably use a little bit of a break, but the excitement of getting out there and scoring will, will bring back some, will bring that feet back to them and put some strength back in their legs as they. Well, good news for Woodford County, folks. Looks like Leighton Starks is up on his feet, moving around. So it was an ankle or foot, but he looks to be walking pretty good. That looks like he's. Of course, I believe he'll be back in the game. None better than Walker Terhoon to get you back on your feet pretty quick. And he's Let's right there to the right of Stark to see how he can test it. Yeah, Walker was bouncing up and down on his toes just then, trying to get Leighton to bounce. Then your head coach comes over and whacks you on the shoulder pad going, get back in there, big fella. <laughs> Stark's a junior and is really, really over the last few games really starting to enforce himself on, on situations and making it really good for Woodford. There's that squib again. They squib it. And it's caught by the up man. And he gets out over the 35 to about the 37-yard line. He got that friendly bounce this time. It just bounced right up to him, right dead in his chest. And Schober on the return. I believe that was what they said. Trying to hear their PA. He's got a great voice. Unfortunately, I don't think those speakers are very clear to me anyway. Matthew Sowers on the tackle for Whitford County. It'll be first and 10 Pioneers from their own 37. Whitford County leads 14 to 8 with 7.16 to play in the first half. Jackets will get the football to start the second half. Crone with Lawson to his right. They give it to Lawson. He'll run right, and he's going to be dropped. May have gotten back to the line of scrimmage, but nope, he lost a yard. It'll be second down. And 11. DeBrince Johnson came right up, filled just exactly where he needed to be from the outside in. And Sturgis, the linebacker, forced him to go wider. Across the middle to Galbraith, he'll catch it. They're going to mark it. The near side, they are marking him at the 43. Give him six, it'll be third and about five. Back-to-back -back tackles for Johnson there. On that coverage and brought him down immediately. Trips here to the near side. Thrown right back to throw. Steps across the middle. He has Galbert missed tackle into Woodford County territory at the 40, and he'll get to the 41 of Woodford County. And I talked about Chase Williams and Nathan Kitchens, his two favorite targets. Williams is extremely favorite target, but Galbert has been big here in the first half with a couple of catches. First and 10 Pioneers trips to the far side. They give it off to Lawson. And he'll get to the 25. Preston Stacy just 35, excuse me, 34. Just grabbed him and threw him to the ground, but the goes 160. Gave him seven. The second down trips to the left. And Whitford County making another timeout. See, they go they go fast. And that's the second timeout of Woodford. They go faster than any team I've seen, but here's the situation. You know. They don't give Woodford County time to get back across the line of scrimmage where they're lined up and the officials cranking it. Yeah, I was gonna say that it's it's they are very quick to the to the line of scrimmage. Yep. I don't think I've seen a high school offense move at this kind of pace. No. The last the last group I saw move like this were the early days of Henry Clay under Sam Simpson. Yeah. But I believe these I believe they this may is move a little faster. More, yep. I think they do. And a little more organized than than well, they don't play a lot of guys. So, that's one of those things. Once again, as a reminder, the Simon Kenton Pioneer cheerleaders will be competing tomorrow in the fall competition. Well, it was a great opportunity there for Coach Johnson to give the defense just a break real quick. With Good luck, ladies. Have yet to hear the name Grant Garrison. They give it off to, nope, Crone carries it up the middle. Boy, Salma just got another bear hug on Preston Stacy, and got Crone all the way down to the seven. Now, well, Max Berry made, again, another shoestring tackle yeah. to, stop a, to stop a touchdown. Well, I like Selma, uh, the, the big left tackle. They give it to Crone right up the middle, touchdown, Simon Kenton. It's going to be a shootout tonight, Darren. I think so, but I'll tell you what, 
Here's the thing. You get a big defense or a big offensive tackle pulling from left to right, and he comes around, and he and you're the only two out there on the side. He was the guy who made the block on the run before the touchdown from thrown on on Stacy. He just wrapped his arms around him. There was no contact inside the shoulders. But now it's 14, and the kick is up, and the kick is no good. And there's Wide a flag left, and we have a flag. And it's around. I believe you're going to get roughing the kicker. I don't know how. He came right in at that. Oh, my goodness gracious. Came in well, after, was, after the missed kick. Well, yeah, but he got blocked into it, so that raves it off. But we are on the road here in northern Kentucky. And I will tell you this. Last time I came up here heavily favored to win a game, 1973, the Jackets went over to Connor, wound up winning 14 to seven, but we had three unsportsmanlike conduct penalties on the same play that they enforced on all of them. <laughs> Steve Lay listening down in Florida, he'll remember that one. So Petty will now get to try the extra point again. And the kick is up, and now we have a whistle on the far side, on the near side. Oh, my goodness. They call offsides against Woodford County. Goodness gracious. Well, if we, you have got to be kidding me. If we keep this, this up, is they'll, getting just, ridiculous. they'll just give them the football in the end zone. This is ridiculous. I have never in my life seen a team that's been flagged for so many flags in the first half. Yeah, there, there, there is some jawing between the line judge. And Dennis Johnson. And, and, Dennis I, and Johnson. I don't blame Dennis. Here's the problem. Simon Kenton has yet to be flagged in the first half. That's the sixth against Woodford County. He's missed both extra points as Petty. And, of course, he'll get the third one. He gets the third one. Five thirty-nine to play before halftime. Jackets now trail 15 to 14. You know. And if I'm a homer, I'm sorry, but guess what? I grew up I, in Woodford County. Well, I didn't – I don't understand the rough in the kicker because he was blocked into him. Uh, the offsides, I couldn't tell from here whether it was offsides or not, but it's got to be questionable. It's the thing that gives you some disturbance is – this, this line judge that happens to be on our sideline is doing an awful lot of talking, not only to our players, but to Coach Johnson. And now Coach is going out to have a conversation with, with the referee. Um, don't know what that's going to result in. Well, here's in, the problem. I, I tell you, I, that's the, the sideline official, that linesman over here, went and complained to the White Hat. Well, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna go out on a limb here in a second, but um, I think we can probably expect to see a sideline warning on Woodford. Well, I'm gonna tell you right Here's now. Here's a squib kick. Yep. Got this a little room Crow around the right side. Hole. White Crow's got a good side. And he runs over the kicker, Garnett. Crow made a good return on that ball and, and laid a laid a nice little hit on the on the kicker as the kicker came up to try to, to bounce him out of bounds. You know, I have to I have to chuckle. The but the public dress announcer just said it was hit hard by the by the kicker. It kind of looked like to me that White Crow had his shoulder yeah. down and delivered a Crow delivered the blow. <laughs> but that's okay. 15-14, Simon Kenton on top of Whitford County here in Well, Whitford's going to have the ball first and 10 at, at, at Simon Kenton 45-yard line after Crow's return. Stacy made a good run there. Thought he had a gain of about four there, but it looks like they're going to give him a gain of three. 36 for the ball carrier for Woodford County. 
Okay, they give him a three yard gain down to the 42 yard line. It'll be second down and seven. I apologize. Uh, I've got so many people watching the video tonight. We've had people ask for a ticker at the bottom. I've given you that. It's, it's, it's giving you a scoreboard. I am trying to do the best we can, folks. Bear with us, okay? Yeah, this Mason. Game. Out to Nelson. Breaks a tackle. 20, 15, 5. Breaks another tackle. Goes five. in standing. Touchdown. Nelson, again, was not going to be denied taking that ball to the. Two plays, 42 yards. Second touchdown of the night for Nelson. Twenty to fifteen, Woodford County. Well, Jabari Alexander helped make that play with continuing to stay with his block here on this side. The kick is up, and the kick is good from Sawyer Ford. And with 4:43 to play before halftime. <laughs> It's 21-15, Woodford County. And how about this, folks? We've had three touchdowns, two by Woodford County, one by Simon Kenton in the last two and a half minutes. It's it's a fast pace. It's arena football on the 100-yard field. <laughs> if, you want, if you're at home and you're watching this or if you're listening to it and you want to go get something to drink, you better go get it right now. Yep. Because when they come back on the field to kick off, this game's going to get – we're going to be roller coastering back and forth again. Well, Woodford County leads 21 to 15, and I'll add that extra point there. It's kind of tough when you're broadcasting and trying to produce. And trying, we, to, and trying to keep up with a guy over here who's just trying to do what he can do. You're doing fine. <laughs> it's, a little, it's a little different behind this microphone than it is the microphone well, announcing. Had a lot of compliments on you and Andy this year. Uh, of course, you last uh, two weeks ago at Collins – Filling in for Andy, filling in tonight for Andy, who is in Lexington tonight with his uh, daughter Maya, who's at the University of Kentucky in a Symphony uh, Philharmonic concert. Ford drives this one deep, and he'll drive it into the end zone. And I kind of hate that rule at the high school level because, you know, you got the dynamic return men back there that can't have a chance. I understand the safety issues and all that stuff, but, you yeah. know, I'm uh, but I am it, an old school guy. But isn't it nice to have a high school kicker be able to kick the ball it in is. the end zone? I look, because the high school kickers are getting so good, I look for them to move it back to the 35 like they do at the college level soon. Well, this is First the longest it's taken Simon Kenton to set up a play at the line of scrimmage. Yeah. First and ten, they give it off to Crone. We get a little bit extra after the play there, too. Off to, off to Williams. Ten-yard gain out to the 30-yard line. First and ten, Simon Kenton. Crone keeps it, runs left, gets a block. Gets to about the 37-yard line. It'll be second down and four. Four signs, actually second. Yep, second and four. You know, I, I, I love the fact that we're getting – Woodford's getting touchdowns on two and three plays, but the defense needs a long drive. Yep. Crone. And he gets a first down at the 42-yard line. Jackets having trouble stopping that RPO. And they, they have a line across from them that matches them in size. They are big. Give it off to Lawson. And he's brought down by Sturgis. Davion Sturgis had that tackle coming up from behind. They give him seven. Second down and three now for Simon Kenton. Yes, if you can hear it at home, we've got we've got cowbells in the in the yellow jacket yep. bleachers tonight. Crone high snap goes to the right. 
They're going to give him a yard to the 46, but I thought he went down at the 47, yeah. right at the line of scrimmage. Third and two. Three receivers here to the near side, one to the back. They give it off to Lawson. That was a hold around that was a the hold. side. Yeah, big I time. Mean, just grabbed the hold of, of Stacy. And Stacy I mean, got away from him, and the jersey went out, and my goodness gracious. And then, and then the line judge goes, well, I didn't see it. Well, I don't know how you didn't see it. They're the only two guys out there with you. They throw out here to the far side to Williams. He catches it. Johnson hits him, and then he gets knocked out of bounds at the Woodford County 32. Of course you didn't see it. You're too struck on yourself. And, yes, I said that. And I hope somebody from the Cajun Stubble is listening because I'm sorry. I officiated, and by grannies, I was told you had a certain area you're looking at. Don't know how you didn't see it. Game of seven. Second and three. Throws out here incomplete. Surprising him to call pass interference there because well, he, and Nason, was... he and Nelson collided. Third and three now. 2.29 to play before halftime. Whitford County in a dog fight. Some of them brought them by their own self, too, because they had a couple of scoring drives where they turned the football over, especially one at the one-yard line. Yeah, the one at the one-yard line may come back to haunt us in this first half. Crone, he'll get the first down. Inside the Woodford County 30 to the 28-yard line. 2.29 to play before halftime. Micaiah Smith on the on the on the tackle. I don't think we're gonna see Starks later tonight. No. Crone throws a crack. Boy, Calvert just pushed off. Pushed. He shoved <laughs> Makai Smith away with both hands and got the and touchdown because he was so wide open that he yeah. I mean Ma it was a Ma blatant two-inch shove. Mikhail was seven yards away from him after he got back from being rocked on his heels yeah. from the shove. It was a two-handed shove. And, again, that was out in front of the back judge. We're tied at 21, and now Petty will try to kick the extra point. And he kicks it up, and the kick is good. And it's 22-21. Simon Kitten. Over Woodford County here in the second half, uh, the second quarter, Yellow Jackets trailing again with 2:08 to play. But I, I tell you what, <laughs> my <laughs> goodness gracious! Yeah, we may be Woodford County announcers, but that was just a blatant two-hand shove from Gal Jackson Galbraith to get away from Makai Smith. And I mean, no, Makai was just rocking back on his heels. Yeah. And from the shove and 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 the back judge sitting right just there, just standing there looking at it. And, oh well, you know. Oh it, my goodness gracious! Maybe he was looking a different direction. We'll give, we'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe he wasn't looking where I, he was supposed I, to be looking. I, I like I like your diplomacy, but <laughs> I'm telling you, those were the two guys deepest in the pattern. He's the furthest away from the line of scrimmage, so he doesn't let anybody get behind him. So that. You know, he's looking right at that in that well, area. He should have been looking right at that area. Holy moly. 22-21, Simon Kenton on top of Whitford County. A little bit of questionable stuff happening tonight here <laughs> in Independence. Garrick Lucas is the near side return man. Kenyon Maxberry on the far side. Lucas in place of Leland Taylor, who's home ill tonight. They're going to kick it big. Garnett time. will kick it. It'll hit the eight-yard line and bounce into the Whitford County end zone. Into the end zone. It, will be a touchback for County. it hit at the 15, It'll though, and rolled the rest of the way in. The line. First That's ten. that touchback, though. And at halftime, it is Scott County leading Lexington Catholic 21-7. Early first half, it is Southwestern 14, Madison Southern or Madison Central nothing. And Boyle trailing Douglas at halftime, 16-6. to six. Well, that, that halftime score surprises me a little bit on the well, Douglas Boyle County game. It does. And, and Boyle playing at home is usually a pretty stout group to deal with. 22-21, Woodford County trailing with 2.08 to play. They have one timeout left. Nason fakes, cuts up, 
Gets over the 20. And gets to the 22. They're going to mark him at the 22-yard line. I thought he got to the 23. But I'm not going to bet on this linesman over here with anything. Second and eight for Woodford County. Taking their time, trailing 22-21 here. Well, we've got this We've got this mismatch with, with Nelson over here on, he's the, beaten, on our yeah, side. He's beaten this corner three times tonight. And we're coming back right to back Nelson. to him. He doesn't break the tackle this time. And then we get a little extra. That should be a penalty. Oh, my goodness. How do you not throw that flag when the guy throws him down after the whistle is blowing? Unbelievable. Give him six. It'll be second down or third and two now. By number 33, Mark over until the rest of the teammates get there. The result will be third down and two. I would think this is going to be Stacy up the gut. They pitch. Nope, give it off to Stacy. Breaks the tackle. Gets the first down over the 30 down. to the 32 with 54.2 to play. Before halftime. This could be Nelson across the center. I, I wouldn't be surprised. Mason back to throw, steps up, steps up. They oh, grabbed him by the face, face mask. mask. Yeah, there. no call. Are you kidding me? Timeout, Woodford Jackson, County. I tell you what. Mason's yeah, head went spinning Aiden around. And they say Aiden Harris on the tackle. Well, that was 50 in blue, and he had a whole bunch of Andrew Nason's face had mask. All of him. All of Andrew's face mask on that one. And I'm surprised Nason got up, not looking out his ear hole. All right, folks, Simon King fans and Woodford County fans. Last week, we had three phones that were 22-21. Tonight, it's almost half time, and we just got our first. Well, we let's. one phone in the press box. If you lost your phone. And we had, they said they're announcing they had three cell phones lost last week. They had the first one tonight. You know, that's kind of odd. We don't ever get a cell phone turned in. Not ever sales, no. <laughs> I don't know. I won't make a comment about our, our fans and, and well, students. Well, I'm not saying our being, fans will do that. I'm, being, what I'm being saying more is responsible more with their stuff. A little bit more responsible, evidently. It is second down to 15 for Woodford County. All right, so we got second and 15. Let's see what Coach Johnson's dialed up here. We need a little bit of – got a blitz on the outside. Mason back to throw. He's in trouble yeah. and he'll be sacked again. Blyer with a tackle. And well, now I wish they would cut that out in high school football, the, the posing and the flexing. And, and I, our players are just as guilty of it. Well, yeah, they were. But in, 11 in, seconds, but I think Woodford's going to go to the halftime. Blyer made a good charge on the blitz. Yeah. But, but Nason was brought down because he bumped into one of our linemen right and just kind of knocked him off. Simon Kenton will lead 22-21 at halftime. And, folks, bear with us here at halftime because I tell you what, we're going to have to regroup here at the halftime as Whitford oh. County trailing 22-20. You can hear the Whitford County faithful not very happy with the officiating in the first half. And to be honest with you, us up here as well. I'm not either. Now, I, you know, there's – I can understand missing a, missing a call Missing a call or two, or two here, but it, it has but been blatant. A blatant hold was an absolute miss. In, and then the blatant and the push face off. Mask, and the, well, the push off and the face mask on Nason there. Nason, and, and then you give them three opportunities to kick an extra point. Yeah. Um, Professional walking through the helmet. So the Jackets trail here at halftime, 22-21. Um and Simon Kenton has yet to commit a penalty. Well, they've yet to commit a penalty according according to the stats. Um, Woodford County with nine in the first half. And I don't think we're going to see Leighton Starks in the second no, he, half. He's, 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 he's doesn't sitting look over here good. on the he's on the on the play on the training table. Ankle's been wrapped again, shoes off. So I don't think we're going to see see Starks back half in the in the second half. And, 
but we've got uh, we've got some work to do on defense to try to figure out how we want to slow down uh, this offense a little well, bit. Well, here's the thing: what they're doing is they are allowing Simon Kenton to dictate the pace, and Woodford is trying to do what they can to get back uh, on the side of the ball. But here's the thing: when the officials are forcing you to hustle up. Yeah, it, it, it's tough on the defense. It's tough on the defense. So, <laughs> here's what you do. If you're Woodford County, you get yourself together again, and, and you come back out. You get the football to start the second half. Um, and uh, well, according just, to our fans, and, I, and, I, and I'm going to uh, just echo what they said. I mean, we got to be ready to play against 16 instead of 11. Because it's, you know, I'm sorry. When you look, you can't go as fast as Simon Kenton is going and not have a, at least a Something. couple of flags on you. Yeah, it, it, you know it lends itself to at least no. a holding call. Every yes, minute. I agree. And, you know, I, I get, you know, and things. And, you know, the first thing you get, oh, wow, a surprise from Shelbyville. How about this, folks, that are listening? Late first half. It's great crossings, 21, Collins, 7. Oh, wow. That is a surprise. That's a shock. <laughs> no disrespect to great crossings, but that Collins team is as talented as you'll find, especially at the quarterback position. So, evidently, great crossings had a heck of a first half or so far in that game. 21 to 7, great crossing over Collins in the first half. In case you join us late, 21-7 Lexington Catholic over, or Scott County over Lexington Catholic at halftime. 16-6 Frederick Douglass over Boyle County at halftime in Danville. That one kind of surprises me. The band is going the direction. Of Mr. Jason Milner. You know, I John I just sit here and think, Cameron McDonald, you know, what thing. And the, and the other one that surprised me that we haven't gotten an update on is Southwestern, 14 to nothing over Madison Central in Richmond. In Richmond, yeah. Well, and, and if anybody's listening and happens to know the Mercer County West Jessamine score. Yeah, we would like to know that one as well. Well, Ryan and I are going to take uh, a little break because I don't have commercials to where we do, but. I want to thank all our fine sponsors on the UK Sports Medicine Game of the Week. Of course, UK Sports Medicine, Citizens Commerce Bank, Jack Kane Ford. Uh, I know I'm going to forget somebody if I don't start looking at it. Uh, Woodford Family Physicians, Versailles Brewing Company, Kentucky Farm Bureau, Mr. Appliance, 84 Lumber, JMB Marathon Cafe, Jason Go State Farm, Showplace Realty, Falling Springs Rec Center, Work out any time. County nine. And we also have Thoroughbred Square Shops, all the businesses down there in downtown Versailles. Kim uh, Woodford County Public Schools. I forgot about them first. Before, I'm sorry, Mr. Atkins, who's at home watching tonight and listening. Uh, Woodford County Public Schools, where kids win. Had a great time last week. He invited me over to do, uh, he and Dennis asked me to, to step out with the homecoming events on Thursday afternoon, and I got over there, and uh, actually it was Friday afternoon, and I did uh, the uh, interview with all the senior football players. That was a good piece, Darren. And you did a I good did, job And with then that. I did, uh, was supposed to do uh, all the senior cheerleaders. Uh, only had two there. We were supposed to have five. I only had two of those young ladies there. And then I interviewed the entire homecoming court. I actually didn't interview them. They introduced themselves and things. And congratulations to Jabari Alexander. And Logan uh, uh, Logan Weaver is the homecoming queen last week for Whitford County, king and queen. Uh, I had a great time. And uh, just uh, somebody said, well, one of the kids asked me, said, well, uh, how do you do all this stuff? And I said, well, just simple. I wing it. <laughs> And, you know, that's what you do. I mean, you know, it's, it's creative things. I mean, it's, I call what you see in front of you, but you have to be creative in certain aspects and things like that. So uh, we are here uh, in a beautiful – and, you know what, 
I understand band members and all this stuff they do, all kinds of different things, and they have competitions, but I, I, I can't get used to bands dressing in different color uniforms than no, their schools. No, I can't either. I can't get I, used I just... to it. Throws me off. Well, Woodford County Trails here at halftime at Simon Kenton, 22-21. to 21. They'll get the ball to start the second half uh, in a game that began out wild and continued to get more wild as the game went progressed in the first half. So, uh, Brian, you and I, will we'll take a little bit quick, quick break because we got to catch our breath. Amen. Back with more here on the Yellow Jacket Sports Network. We're at halftime.
Okay, Brian and I are back here at Simon Kitten High School. Both teams out on the field warming up for the second half. Whitford County trails 22-21 here at the halftime break. The Jackets will get the football to begin the second half of action here when we're back to, to play. Now I'm getting an update on the Mercer County West Jessamine game. Okay. Uh, update I'm getting says they think Mercer's up 41 to 13, according to one of the sites they're looking for, and they're trying to confirm it for us. So. 41 to 13. 41 to 13. Who's ahead? Mercer. Holy smokes. Which. We'll see. Well, there goes the – that sounded like the horn to get the second half started, but we're uh, we're still on the field warming up. Doesn't look like that uh, the officials are in any hurry to get the second half to start off. Nope. They don't have as far to drive back home as we do. Correct. Well, Woodford County uh, in a dogfight here tonight, and uh, – we were down in the stands a little bit a moment ago <laughs> conversing with some people, and uh, I don't know what you were like when you walked out, uh, but the first two people I came across saying, how many penalties we have and how many do they yeah, have? have that, that's the talk of the stands here in Woodford. I have, I have down 10 for Woodford County. We and Simon Kenton, zero. I don't think they've had a penalty. No, they ain't had a flag thrown heart. against them. And, again, I don't believe you can go as fast as they're going and not have a motion penalty, uh, a holding penalty, a block in the back. Uh, I know you work on that stuff all year long if you're a high up-tempo team, but I have a very hard time believing uh, you, you're not getting at least a block in the back well, or two. I, I agree, but, I, I, again, I'm going to talk about how impressed I am with – how they run this offense yeah. and this hurry-up offense because it, it's very efficient for what they're looking to do. Uh, and and they run it well. We'll, we'll see what the uh, Woodford coaches have come up with to, with this yeah. second half. To You know, I think if we can slow the offense down just a little bit. Right. Um, let our defense keep their breath a little bit. Uh, our offense is going to be fine. We're, we're going to score points. But, uh, you know, that is the use score the, they have, 41-13, Mercer over West Jess. And to use the old cliche, Once again, we have a phone in the press it may come down to who's got the ball last at the end of this game tonight. It might, and Whitford County right now will get the football to start the second half. Um, Want to tell everybody about something that's happening next Friday night when Whitford County goes back home to begin the 5A playoffs against Whitley County. If you are a military veteran, doesn't matter what war, what time you served, if there's no war going on or whatever, uh, what branch you were in, doesn't matter. Uh, we want you to be at Whitford County's Community Stadium next Friday night uh, so we can honor you. Uh, so we want you to be there next Friday night and uh, we want to make sure uh, that you get in and any veteran that shows up and shows a, their military identification card. I say ID, but no one can understand what they say. So I say identification card. Show your military identification card at the gate. You will be admitted free. Oh, now, now, people that come with you will not unless they are showing their military ID as well. But you will be entered in free. Then you will be asked to come down on the field at some point in the game. I don't know exactly when. We'll talk to you and let you know. Uh, but come down on the field. You'll be recognized. Now, for folks that may be listening in Whitley County, that includes you guys. So if you have any military Absolutely. veterans that come in, you are more than welcome to be admitted free as well as come in uh, and be recognized with the military veterans of Woodford County. And so. It's going to be an honor to, 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 to pay tribute to the men and women who have Yes, fought, that's next served and, and yes. made sure that we're able to be able to carry out the freedoms that Starting we have. Yes. So Woodford County will receive the kickoff, and Garnett will kick off, and he puts it up here on the right hash mark. 
I will say this, Sawyer Ford is the only kicker I see now that lines it up in the middle of the field. Everybody puts it on one hash mark or the other. They'll squib it here to the near side. This is Wyatt Crow. He'll field it to 35, breaks through, gets up over the 40, up over the 45 to about the 47-yard line. That's where Whitford County will shut up shop first and 10 from their own 47-yard line. Another good return for Wyatt Crow. They're not going to kick it deep to Whitford County's deep guys. And guess what? The two guys that have returned touchdowns for the kickoff return, are not back there tonight. Aiden nope. Nelson's not back there, and Leland Taylor is at home. <laughs> I would so have thought by now. I think they're a little scared of us back there. What do you think? Because Crows had several good returns. Yep. I would have thought they Kick might the have other been way. kicking it the other way. They fake the pitch. They look in the flats for Stacy, and it's tipped number by number 50, who again flexes. And if Mason fakes that, the, no, lay, the, yeah, the lineman goes airborne. You get around him, you either got room to run or you got Stacy available for a big game. Second and 10 for Woodford County. From their own 47, just underway here in the second half. It's 22-21, Simon Kenton. Yep. I believe that's going to be motion on, illegal motion on us. We have a false start against Woodford County. Penalty number 11 against Woodford County, a flag. Now, that one was easy to see. But, I, you know, again, folks, it is heavily in favor. The yellow flags tonight against the Jackets. Or not in favor, but against the Jackets. So it's second down and 15 for Woodford County from their own 42-yard line. And the Jackets have played well offensively. And not played too bad defensively. The problem is you're, you're giving up some plays uh, – Big plays, but defensive penalties are first. He's in the neutral zone now, no call. They give it to Stacy. comes around the left side, breaks the tackle, runs over a guy, and knocked out of bounds at the Woodford County 48-yard line. Yeah, I was going to say, he got back just about to the original line so of scrimmage. So third and nine for Woodford County. Eventually knocked out of bounds by number 21 for the Pioneers, Braden Ross. Did get a confirmation on that Mercer County score. JT, thank you for checking that score out and getting it back to us. It is a little bit surprising to see Mercer County right, leading Mark West Jessamine. That's in Harrisburg, too. Mercer's tough at home. Is that a first-half score? Is that a late or second-half score? Mason back to throw, looking down the crease for Maxbury. Oh, drops it. Just had it and then dropped it. He got lit up by the safety, and I tell you what, there was a little head hunting going on, too. It was just a touch there. Yeah. You know, that was... That ball was a little high coming in. Fourth and nine. I think Coach is going to go. Well, no. no. He's going to punt with Sawyer Ford. I thought maybe So, the first was, time tonight, Whitford County stopped offensively. But a five-yard penalty for illegal procedure hurt the Jackets. we got a little... A little mix up here trying to get lined up on the Woodford Where side. We're player trying to get players in. Think that they weren't. We're gonna spread we're gonna spread their defense out a little bit with with this punt, see what happens. Ford. Hits it at the twenty. That's a good It'll kick. go inside good the ten, inside the five. It'll drop and roll dead inside the Simon Kenton one-yard line. A tremendous punt. A 53-yard punt. No return. That was excellent. Get that ball down inside the one. Let's see what. And everybody on the Simon Kenton sideline was hollering, Peter, that wasn't a, that wasn't a punt straight up in the air. That, <laughs> that thing was all angled off to the wide side of the field, and then took a great roll, and I think that was Preston Stacy that downed it inside I the one. it was. It went down there and just, just waited mean, for it. That ball is backed up right at the Simon Kenton goal line. It'll be Blyer in it, running back to the left of Crone. Straight. Uh, Jackson will be dropped right at the one. Right at the one-yard line. He got just nothing. outside. He got no game. They're going to put it right back on the line of scrimmage. Second 
Crone back to throw, looking out to the side, throws way out in front of his intended receiver. It's third and 10 now for Simon Kenton. Boy, the good news here is if Woodford can force a punt from inside their own one, no room at all for Simon Kenton to mess up with a, a maybe get a safety out of it. Gives Woodford their lead, plus if Woodford gets the football. And they've, they've slowed their offense down here to start Big this second time. half. We're not moving this quick as we were. 10.56 to play. Crone keeps it. Goes off the oh, left side. Big gap. Big hole. And again, there was a nice little crackback block, which is what they called it back in the day. He got out past the 10-yard <laughs> line. But that's that blindside block. That's it. That's that blindside box. But they don't call it up here, I guess. He got out to the 14-yard line. The guy that got away with it was Galbraith. He absolutely obliterated Makai Smith. They give it off to Blyer, coming left side. Cuts it up. First down outside the – gets to the 20 or so. You know, we got to give, we got to give Preston Stacy due there. He gets held on the play, back behind the line of scrimmage and then scrambles to come run the ball carry down from behind. Now he never, I mean, it's it's getting to be bad. And they got a gain of nine on that. So 49-13 now, Mercer over West, yes. Crone keeps it this way, breaks a tackle, and gets over the 30 to about the 34-yard line. Drug down again from behind by Preston Stacy. Get Jabari Alexander in for Stacy here. Give him a little breather here because we're going to need him on the offensive side of the ball. To be Simon Kenton moving the football out from the shadow of their own goalpost on third and ten. A big conversion with Crone, but I thought they got away with a blindside block. They took that out of the game. They give it off. To, nope, Crone keeps it running left. Another big game. First down to the 46-yard line, 11. Still nothing just, fancy. No, it's really nothing it's fancy. It's the RPO, and all he's doing is reading it, the defensive end. And Selma is doing a great job on Garrison, but he's also getting some help from a little blindside block coming from the, to the outside linebacker, which is Makai Smith. Actually, it looks like Davion Sturgis now is the outside linebacker. Give it off to Lawson. Gets to the midfield. They're giving him the 49. Another generous <laughs> spot. Good grief. They gave him the rollover there, but five-yard gain, second and five. I, I, you know, I'm beginning to just give up on trying to, to get spots because we had one crew down at Collins. We can never get the, spot, the ball spotted to find out where we are going to put it. We had to wait. Second and five. Lawson running left. Oh, there was a block in the back. There's another there. hold. Finally, we get a flag against Simon Kitten. Lawson's going to score, but it's coming back. It's got to come back. But they missed one to get him around the yeah, corner they, in the first place. Yeah, they missed They missed the block in the back on the, on the inside seam. And, folks, let me tell you, with 8.38 to play in the third quarter, Simon Kitten's going to have their first – Penalty of the ball game. 28 minutes in, they finally have. It's not a first down. It's not a first down. It's not a first down. No, they're they're giving them a. They're giving them a first down. Oh my god! The play happened three yards before the first down. It should be from the spot of the. Oh my goodness gracious! Well, they. They've not even marked off the 10-yard penalty. Well, they marked it off, but they said it happened from the 33. How does it happen from the 33 when he's – never mind. Crone gives it off to Lawson. There's another hole. They don't call it to the 29. I see why Selma is doing such a good job on Grant Garrison. He's just bear-hugging him. Now, Selma's a good good offensive lineman. He's a, a very a good athlete. He doesn't need to do that, but he's just grabbing Grant on, on either side of the backs of his shoulder pads and turning wherever he wants. That's a hold. Flyer straight up the middle to the 35. Nope, making the 36. It'll be third and about four. 
Whitford County needs a stop here with 7.56 to play. This has been a tough night for Whitford County's defense. They have not played poorly at all, to be honest with you, Brian. No, they really haven't. They just, they've had a hard time dealing with this hurry-up offense. And Crone cuts it back, first down for Simon Kenton. And I tell you what. Jasper Johnson on the tackle for Whitford County. Well, if Johnson doesn't make that tackle, there's Simon Kenton was in for another touchdown. Uh, we're back to back to run a little bit more of the hurry up. Flyer picks his spots. His knee went down at the 24 yard line, but they're gonna give him the 21. Give him a gain of seven. Second down and three. Oh, I tell you. Crone keeps it running right. And he runs out of bounds, and Nelson says, turns and says, hey, I got held again. And I'll tell you what, this side judge is a little different. He's out on the field when the play's coming his direction. Have you noticed that? He's a couple of yards on the field. He's trying to get up and close so he can see it. I guess. First and 10, this will be a 99-yard drive if Simon Kent can punch this one in. Crone keeps it, running right. Drop. Grant Garrison. That's the first time tonight we're going to get to call Garrison's name yeah, on, he, a, on a tackle. He whipped. Salam that time. Second and ten now for Simon Kenton from the Whitford County 18-yard line. They've gone trips on the left side. They give it off, off to Blyer. Nothing doing. He stopped. And Christian Ponce says, I'm going to throw you back. They're giving him the 18-yard <laughs> line. Are you serious? They gave him the 18. He got hit in the backfield at least at the 20. How do you? <laughs> they gave it to him. There's no game. Well, well they're going to have to give him loss of a yard. So it's third and 11. Throwing. Keeps it, running left. Middle touchdown, Simon Kenton. And it's 28-21 now in favor of the Pioneers. We've just not had an answer to this quarterback running the ball. We've, we've played three good quarterbacks this season. We have. And now, he's the best running quarterback we've had. I don't care about Jacob Jones. I don't care about Kenyon Gooden. This guy's the best runner. The extra point is up. That's good. And it's good. It looked like he shanked it to the left. Twenty-nine, 29-21, Whitford County trails here in the third quarter. With 5.44 to play in the fourth quarter, or the third quarter, Whitford County trailing 29-21. And I believe this is probably the first time Woodford's trailed this year in the third quarter. Uh, Unless no, we maybe trailed, one night we, at Franklin we, we, County. We trailed to Franklin County. But that being said, now this Simon Kenton team is a very good ball club. Don't get me wrong. But that was that was an impressive that drive. That was an impressive well, you drive. Gotta, you got to give them due on that yeah, one. That was an impressive was a, drive. The, the big play was the third down and 10 from their own one to get the first down. And you know some of these other teams in the 5A are going to see this running that Crone has done. So it's 29-21, Simon Kenton by eight. Garnett will kick off. He's gonna kick it He'll deep. hit this one down the middle of the field. It'll hit at the five and go into the end zone. And Whitford County will take over first and 10 from their own 20 yard line. We need to answer with a drive of our own here. Well, our defense needs us to take about a six to eight minute drive here. Yeah, well, we can't. Eat clock up. At times we can't do that. Uh, we, we are a, we, we do, we can drive the ball. We've shown the capability of doing that, but the problem is at times, too, we also have 
so much big cape big play capability. That we just break one and not that I don't want a touchdown, Darren. Correct. You're just being just, an old oh, defensive I get, player, I got you. you, you got to catch your breath and get you. your, and get your legs back underneath you a little you. bit. Max Berry in motion. They give it off to Stacy, running right. He gets hit and dropped after a gain of two. Aiden Harris on the stop for Simon Kitten. Number 36, Preston Stacy, the ball carrier at the middle. Tell you what, if they fake that dive and let Nelson or Nate, uh, Nason come out here with a bootleg, there ain't a blue jersey on this side of the field. They are reacting as soon as they see that motion. Whether we do that toss sweep or the, the dive to the fullback, they have a ton of – he has a ton of room to run over here, and I don't think they got anybody on this side of the ball that can catch him. Second and eight. Low snap. They throw out here to Nelson. Catches it. And he's dropped for no gain. Yeah, he was just covered up from Number from the day one. And here's what we do. We, I, I like that look, Number but here's seven. the thing. They are reacting. They How about a stop on the little sled and, and go? I tell you what, I like this. Luke, I like this Luke public Schaefer, address announcer, but uh, that wasn't Luke a hard hit. <laughs> he was just <laughs> uh, said he was hit hard. Uh, they straightened him up, but that was because they got there in numbers. Third and eight for Woodford. Nason back to throw across the middle. He has Danny Nelson open. catch it. 50, 45, 40, 35, 20, 15, 10. See you later. We needed that score. I won't take it back. I'm excited to get the score. And who talked downstairs to us? I, he's going to turn around and, told, and tell you I told you so. <laughs> Brian and I know him very well. We've known, I've known him a lot longer than Brian has. But Jerry Adams said, why don't we hit Nate Nelson on the post? Yeah. Guess what just happened? <laughs> we hit him Aiden on the post. Nelson right across the center on the post. And so then he outran six pioneers. I and didn't they weren't even, even close. I didn't see him score. I was concentrated on the backfield back there, just making sure there wasn't a flag coming out anywhere. Third reception for a touchdown tonight for Nelson. Woodford County will go for two to try to tie it at 29. 420 to play in the third. This one could be an interesting drive home tonight. Nason in the pistol with Stacy behind him. They roll right, throw that way to Nelson. Whole lot of contact and nothing doing. Are you serious? <laughs> Nelson came out of his break and the quarterback just grabbed him. And again, no flag. Woodford County, 27. 29-27, Woodford County trails with the failed two-point conversion. And we get the same linesman on this side now than the other one we had. I don't know what they're looking at, but I – Brian, I, I'm speechless. I, I am speechless. One, I thought for sure we'd get a flag on that one, but – just, well, they, the, earlier in the game, they gave – before you joined us, if, you have, if you're joining us late, they gave Simon Kenton not one, not two, but three attempts to get an extra point. Third time's a charm. And third time's a charm. We can't even get a flag for a blatant hold. I don't get it. 29-27, Woodford County trailing. Simon Kenton here in Independence. I know, I know Sawyer wouldn't do it, but but a kick that lands about the 15 over here on the on the Woodford County sideline would be a nice spot. Because you put got a ball. speed galore over here. He drives this one down the middle of the field to come down to the seven at, to Williams. He's got a hole, and there was a clip. They didn't call it. There was a clip as big as you please in the 25. Gets out to the 42-yard line and for one of the few times this year. Saw your four when he kicks it deep. Does not kick it in the end zone. But I, Sowers on the tackle. But I tell you what. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. Oh, to be on the road. I didn't see who got clipped, but somebody was down there. I think it was – I think that was Abdul Belial that was down there. And he got hammered in the back. He would come with these trips to this side again. Yep, trips to the near side to give it off to Bly. This is Lawson. Caleb Brown has him after a gain of nothing to the 42-yard line. 
Four minutes to play in the third. It's 29-27, Simon Kent. And again, folks, I apologize if it sounds like I'm homering, but you know, I have. Well, we are homers. Well, I am from Woodford County. I am the broadcast crew, but I tell you what, I have never seen some of the stuff going on that's been let go on one side of the ball. Stacy comes on the blitz. This is Crone, big hole, headed the other direction. He has a first down to Woodford County, 31. Well, Maxbury made a really nice open field tackle there because Crone was was trying to cut back. This is, but again, you can't run what they're doing with that RPO. It's 30 to six, Douglas over Boyle in the third at the end of three. That's a shocker to me, folks. But I tell you what, I you can't run what they're doing all night long and not get at least one hold. They run it this way. And then Christian Ponce just, just lit up Chase Crone. And the helmet goes flying. Now that, my friend, is a big hit. That was a big hit. Not only did Crone lose his helmet, but his mouthpiece went flying. Yeah, Ponce just, just, that's and Lauren it was a very the legal hit. And they gave it to the 30. That's Tucker over. Of course, Crone has to go to the sidelines for a play, but well, how did he get to the 30 when Ponce drilled him right at the line of scrimmage? They give it off to Lawson, and he loses a yard. They're going to mark him at the no, 31. No, he didn't lose a yard. They're going to mark him at the line of scrimmage. Oh, my goodness gracious. you got to be kidding me. Uh, uh. <laughs> I'm sorry. I... I, I got a laugh on that one. I, I, I just. It is starting to. It is starting to be. It's starting to become ridiculous. It really is. Thrown with the count. Yeah, we jump. Same things happen. Uh, another. And that's a, that's that linesman again. Yeah, but we did we jumped that time. I, I, well, I agree, but here's the thing: how come you don't call it on the other side? Well, I can't answer that question. Because they had a guy literally laying in in the. Now I've never seen that. Have you seen what the white hat just did? No. He played some air guitar. What's that mean? Was that a signal for something? They come around the corner, and Crow will be dropped. By Makai Smith, Smith at the 30. Drops him at the 30. Okay. Fourth gonna, and 10 with under two to play in the third. We're going to get a mark at the 30 here. It'll be fourth and nine for Simon Kitten. That was a great play by Makai Smith. Yeah, that was just textbook stretch it out, come up, and make the tackle. Taking an awful long time here. Nelson will match up one-on-one -on -one with Chase Williams, who's the middle receiver of the trip here to the bottom of the screen. Crone looks across the middle, incomplete. And I think Aiden Nelson got there a little early, too. I think he did, too. We, we may have gotten a break We'll there. take one there, and it's Woodford County football. Yeah, I thought Nelson got there just about a half a second too yeah. soon. In the, in, the, in the legendary words of Marty Brenneman, hold the phone. <laughs> and actually, I think that was actually coined by the late Keith Jackson. I Am believe I right? you're right. I believe you're right. Showing my age now. All right, so. So it's Woodford County, first and 10 from their own 30, Defense trailing 29-27. Defense made a good stop there. Big stop, and and. Go back to the play right before that. Makai Smith with a big tackle. That was offsides. We finally get flag well, number two. Let's see. Oh, offsides. 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 Simon Kenton. Penalty number two against the Pioneers. First and five for Woodford County. Again, Darren, I'm going to talk about we need a good three, four-minute drive here for a score just to give the defense a chance to get their legs back underneath them. Nason throws out in the flat to Makai Smith. He has it. 
Spun out of bounds. He gets a first down at the Woodford County 42, a gain of seven. First and 10, Woodford County. Both these teams have run up and down the field like it's been the defensive coordinator's night off. Well, and, and we were expecting this tonight. We were expecting really yep. a good game and a high scoring game. And what we didn't expect is the lopsidedness with the penalty yardage against Woodford County. Stacy running right, up the middle, breaks a tackle into Simon Kitten territory. They're gonna mark him down at the 49. Are you serious? Are you serious? He's laying right at the 48, which should have been a first down. Nine yard gain for Stacy. 55 seconds to play, Woodford County. The ball is Pioneer territory at the 49. That I, <laughs> I just sit here and look at the spots. I'm going, why Why do I even guess anymore? Mason keeps it. That was a busted play from the start. Should have given it to Stacy. A loss of three. By number 59, Cullen Schmidt. Cullen Schmidt on the tackle. He's a big fella right in the middle. He's a fire plug. I think he goes 337, I think is what they said on the thing. Whitford County's going to keep it till the end of the third the, quarter. Yeah, looks like we head to the fourth quarter. Whitford County trailing 29-27. But they have the ball. Third and about three. Coach Johnson down here rallying the team. I can just imagine he's standing there going, boys, we got them exactly where we want them now. <laughs> We got them exactly where we want them. Well, I tell you what, the defense has come up with a couple of stops when they've needed to tonight. I'm telling you, the score that surprised me. I mean, I know that great crossing Collins score surprises me, but not near as much as that Frederick Douglass Boyle County score. That that is a shocker. I did get a little bit of an update on the Mercer County West Jessman game. Yep. They're telling me that Mercer County scored. Four touchdowns in a minute and 30 seconds before the half. Now, so that, expl that explains a little bit of, of that explosive score. Well, West Jessman has been known to give up points, a.k.a. Jackets hung 77 on them, 43 if, in the second half. And if it's at 49 and 13, then they're at a running clock. Sounds like it. So. Mason back to throw. Throws out here to Makai right. Smith. First down, 44-yard line of Simon Kenton. They are just picking on the on this corner over here. He made a couple of plays. Thought he got away with a two-point conversion pass interference or defensive holding, but they did not. No, that that was a good call by Coach Pelasasa. Yep, and and Makaya ran the perfect route, turned around, waited on the ball, and just plopped right down. Wanted to make sure he held on to the ball and got a first down. And first and ten, Woodford County from the Simon Kenton 44. They give it off to nope, Stacy. Nope. Should have kept it. Nason kept it. He got dropped for a yard loss, second and eleven. Andrew Nason. Not Nason. I told him it wasn't Nason. I told him it was Nason. He has butchered. Nason. Andrew, I apologize to his parents and and family listening back and down in Hopkinsville. I apologize. I told him his name. So. Twenty-eight to seven. It's now Scott County over Lexington Catholic. A lot of things happening tonight that's not favoring the Jackets. Guys lined up, the defensive ends lined up off sides. Yes, he is. I'm just sitting here looking at this. Head and hands right off. Throwing deep for Makai Smith. Goes up, makes the catch down to the 17-yard line. Or the 18. Gain of 25. First and 10, Woodford County. Mason is coming into his own to throw in the football this tonight. And I say that because Bryce Patterson is just below us. And, uh, <laughs> Must be on fall break this week. Well, I'm going to tell you, Micaiah Smith went up and made a great, yep. great and catch they're taking, there. And they're taking advantage of that size advantage they have. First and 10, Woodford County from the Simon Kinn 18. 10, 11 to play in the ball game. That's, that's pass interference. Are you kidding me? 
Second and ten. Well, we got to wave a little bit because Preston Stacy was about a half a step ahead of that count. I, I thought maybe we were going to get a, get an illegal procedure call. Well, Luke Sheber again arrived a little bit early. And there is no uncatchable pass in football in high school ranks. Second down, 10 from the Simon Kitten 18 yard line. Jackets need six here. A field goal will give them the lead, but we want to get this thing in the end zone. They give it on the reverse to Maxbury. Spins away, gets inside. They're going to mark him at the 16 yard line. Are you? I thought it's where the ball is when he goes down, unless his knee hit the ground. His knee hadn't hit the ground. They're giving him the 16. Third and eight. Third and eight. Third down and eight. 9.38 in the clock moving. Whitford County trailing 29-27 here in Independence tonight. Mason's going to take this one under center here. Stacy behind him. Max Berry in motion. Looks, throws to Makai Smith. Looks like an interception. Shaver intercepts it, but I tell you what, you got to take a chance there. Yep, you do. I, you and the Jackets turn over for the third time tonight. Well, that was a tip ball in the end zone. And then it becomes a 50-50 ball. And, and Galbert was just there to, to be able to get his hands around it first. Well, Makai Smith came in to get to battle for it. And I don't know the rule on that. This is the one rule I'm not sure about. What if it's tipped and both a defender and – the offensive guy come down with it simultaneously. It's still a simultaneous catch, and it's a touchdown. It's a simultaneous catch, and it okay. goes to the offense. But see, Crone moves to the side before the snap, and he never gets called for illegal no. procedure. You ever notice that? I did. I hadn't paid that much attention to it until about the last two or three snaps. Yeah. And he's moving to his left when he has the running back to his left before the ball snapped. That's second down and ten. Nelson runs. Lawson out of bounds. Crone keeps it going to the right side. Uh -oh. Big hole, and there he goes. And they got another another hold. That Kitchens. Was, that was. And nothing behind it. That's Chase they, they didn't block Preston Stacy. then. They tackled him. They tackled him. They tackled him and laid down on top of him. 35-27 now. Simon Kenton, I tell you what, I have, I, I hope that Dennis Johnson takes this film and shows it to the officiating crew ahead of Northern Kentucky because I have never seen a more blatant disregard. Yes. Instead, Petty kicks the extra point good. 36-27 now, Simon Kenton. And the Jackets find themselves down nine now. With 8.56 to play in the ball game. Jackets you know, need I, an answer quick. Coach Johnson's asking for some conferring with officials out here. Of course, they're going to try to walk him back to the sideline. They're going to say we didn't see it. Now, the back judge is making some excuse, said he got him around, to, got lower to show. No, he did not. No, I mean it was it was a hold on Stacy. It was a block in the back that broke him at the twenty-five. Um, and Coach Johnson just, you know, I I just I this has gotten to be comical. It really has, Brian. And and again, I, you know, I apologize if, if listeners and viewers at home are thinking that we're being real critical, folks. We are watching this live, and I'm telling you, it has just been blatant miscalled. I mean, just, just you got a guy out here looking at a receiver and, and or a blocker and a, and a defender, and the guy just tackles him, no call. He says, I didn't see it. Well, what were you looking at? Well, it, it, it reminds me of a clip from a movie we'll talk about here in a second. Garnett kicks off. This is Max Berry from the six. 
Gets up over the 35 to about the 40, and then a little bit extra afterwards. I was going to make a movie reference, Darren. If, okay. if you remember the, the movie, remember the Titans, when the officials had decided before a ball game that they were going to they were going to make sure that the Titans lost that game. And remember the time that – They uh, marked him at the 39. Sorry. What, 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 what? <laughs> oh, my God. How, how, I give up. I, I give up. I, 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 I have been – I have seen a lot of things in 39 years, but <laughs> I'm telling you what. Holy smokes. You lose nine yards somehow. Stacy running left. Cuts it up. And gets a little extra over in the Simon Kitten Back bench. Gets up to the 46. That's a gain of four to be second. No, give him a gain of seven. Hard hit. Well, you know, they don't even have the ball back to where it should have been spotted to start the Correct. It should have been at, at the least at the 46-yard line. <laughs> Unbelievable. Folks, it has been a interesting night of football here in Independence, Kentucky. Nelson in motion. He gets the handoff running right. Stacy just obliterates the guy. And they get inside the 40 yard line to the 38. 28-7, Franklin County over Madison Southern. It's Southwestern 28, Madison Central nothing. Those are shocks to me, folks. Just got another update on the Mercer County game. It's 56 to 13 with about five minutes to go in the third quarter. Holy smokes. Mercer scored on the opening kickoff, kickoff of the second half. Eight minutes to play in the ball game, and he looks like he's all sides again. You give it off to Graham Hodge, breaks a tackle, gets inside the, well, they're going to mark him at the 35. Okay. I, I, I give up again. I, I'm old for the night on spots, Andy Smith, if you're listening now, if you're a concert. Brought down by the Pioneers, number 34, Josh Bowling. Andy's listening to good music right now. Yeah, unless he might be done. It's 9.30, so he may be done already. Mason with Hodge behind him. Give it off. Running on the side. Gets a first down. And they're going to mark him at the 28. Now he got the first down. He needed the 20, the 29. He got to the 28. Okay. 7.20 to play, but Whitford now giving their offense a little time to rest. I wouldn't be surprised if Whitford, if they score here, kick an onside kick. Oh, I would fully expect that out of Coach Johnson at this point. We're almost at a point where we need one of those quick scores. I know I've been talking about wanting to drive, but we need to get the ball back. Hodge the fullback. Mason keeps it. And how did he get back there that quick? There is no way. Mason trying to get free on the right side, but tackled immediately by the Pioneers, number 77, Jake Tunnel. Jake had put off, but I tell you what, he got back there before Nason ever got the snap. Now, how do you do that without being offsides? Wow. Nice quick jump. Yeah. Quick jump. Yeah. The alternative word, quick. Nason back to throw. Looking for Makai Smith. Goes up, gets it. He should be in the end zone. That should be a touchdown. No, they're not going to give it to him. They're going to give him the one. They're going to give it to him at the one. I hate to tell somebody, but when you're laying on top of the defender, that does not mean you're down. When you're laying on top of the defender and the ball's across the goal line, it's a touchdown. Or in the immortal words of a guy that got me thrown out of a game one night, when the ball crosses the line, it's a score. And he's listening at home tonight. Ray, first and goal Are from they the one. Jump? Um, all sides, all and sides. there's only a half a yard. We got flags all over the place on that one. Well, it's because Woodford was going to score. 5.56 to play. Half the distance. So now we're at the half-yard line. Why are you starting the clock? After a penalty should be a penalty doesn't, The clock doesn't start, doesn't it? Until the, it should not. Until the snap of the ball. He's got an appointment. 
They give it off to Stacy. Touchdown. All right, we got a signal, so. Holy smokes, it has been one of those nights tonight, folks. 36-33, and I think Whitford's going for the extra point to make it 36-34 here. Yeah, that would make sense. Go ahead and get get it so that the field goal wins the ball game if it comes down to that. Kayla Brown trotting onto the field. Might want to sprint because the way this is going tonight, we might get a delay of game penalty. Clock may run. And look, it's already at 10 seconds. Are you serious? Kick is up and the kick is good. Mason just barely got that snap down. Yeah, he did. But I had just made the comment just then. Kayla better hurry out there. They blew the play in. There's no way the play clock had gone that fast down to the back judge putting back his hand up to let you know 10 seconds. seconds. Unbelievable. It is just, it is, folks, it has been one of those nights. I know we are the weekend, the, the Friday night before Halloween, but it has been a really goofy night. Well, and I'm, and I'm going to renew my plea while we're on here because I Go don't, ahead. you know, for our listeners that are out there, if you've got any interest in being an official <laughs> or that you have any young people in your family that want to be an official. I agree. I spent a bunch of years as a baseball umpire. Some of the Taking best times the in the world. County, 10, it's a great opportunity for somebody to stay involved in the game. And, folks, let's face it, we need officials at the, at the youth level. We need officials at the high school level. We need individuals who want to be professionals and act and look and dress professional when they're on the field. So give this a, give this a look. There's that squib kick. And Simon Kitten got it. And they're going to mark him at the 48-yard line. Are you dead serious? <laughs> there is no way the ball's at the 47-yard line or even the 48. Well, again, on that squib, Darren, there was that perfect bounce just straight to. Well, they put it at the 47, but he caught it at the 46. So it'll be first and 10, Simon Kenton from their own 46-yard line. Jackets have had trouble stopping the RPO tonight. And no disrespect to Mr. Jones and Mr. Gooden, this is the best running quarterback we faced this year. He's moving again. Garrison misses him. And then he slides down. And they mark him at the 49-yard line. That's the end of it. If he gives himself up, it's where he starts giving himself up, and he gave himself up at the Simon Kenton 49. But they put it right on the midfield strike. Gain of three, second and seven. Now, I have been told that by an official already. He starts giving himself the same thing as college, right? Give yourself up. He started slide at the 49. That's where it should have been. Thrown on the carry, and he gets stopped at the 48. Third and five now for Simon Kenton. Micaiah Smith making the initial hit. Five minutes to play in the ball game. Woodford County trailing 36-34. Third and five is a big play here, Darren. Defense can rise the occasion here. I'd say we're in four down territory. All right, now this should be down to 10 seconds on the clock by my count with the back judge. But he well, we're is not, not anywhere close to that yet. No, not according to the back judge. Prone, rolling right. Stacy after he drops makes a great tackle. At the 48. Hold on. Why is the official worried about moving the box back? When All right, Woodford took a timeout here. He's worried about the box, and Dennis Johnson screaming in his ear, timeout. He should have blown the whistle. Now you set the box. Priorities are screwed up. 4-16 to play in the ball game. Whitford County trailing 36-34. Coach Crowley is not real happy either. No, he's not. He is, and the, the side judge looks over at him as if to say, really? <laughs> Sorry, Ford roosting up his right leg in case they need him here. Jackets need 
If you're Simon Kenton, I don't think you go for it here. I think you've got to punt this thing deep and, and try to ha and hope your defense can stop Whitford County. I don't think you give Whitford County the football back in this in this area. Do you? I wouldn't. I mean, before the before the sack, I would have thought it was four down territory. But fourth and nine for Simon Kenton from their own 48 yard line. And no, they're just back they're going the back for the kick. Oh, oh snap. snap over the. And Woodford County will take it. It's loose. Ball still loose. Caleb Brown picks it up. Caleb picks and it up. The score. On Yellow Jackets. No flag on the play. No I'm flag. still looking. Simon Kitten's wanting the ball down at the 25. It was loose. And the congregate, hold on, the officials are talking the in the officials end are talking. And in the mortal words of Keith Jackson, hold the phone. Hold the phone. Don't be surprised, folks, if they move it back. They're going to pull it back. Here it comes. That is horrible. They're going to pull that it back. That is horrible. That is terrible. That ball was not That down. is horrible. That ball was loose. It was loose the entire time. Woodford picks it up. No, sir. No, sir. Uh, I tell you what, Dennis is going to have to get 15 on this one. Coach is going to have to get 15 on this. That is a horrible this call. This is the only way you're going to get the high school association to pay any attention. He's going to have to oh, get no. 15 here. They're putting it out at the 48-yard oh, line. Oh, you do what? What in For the what? world? What do we got here? What? This is this is a homer job. This is this is beyond. I don't even know what how what you can comprehend. Oh my gosh! They are saying the play should have never happened. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! You have got to this be is, kidding me. This is. I don't understand where the even the call comes from. They're. They're playing this as dead. They're calling this as no play was called. The ball was snapped. The ball was live. There was no whistles being blown. There was no timeout. This is absolutely, this is crazy. oh my God. This is, this is the craziest thing I ever saw. This is, this is absolutely, this is beyond ridiculous. And I know, Folks at home are tired of hearing this, but this is a horrible, horrible, horrible. Folks, I tell you what. Let me see if I can get an explanation, okay? I'm gonna go down to the Whitford County Coaches box. All right, I'll try to. I'm I'm actually I'm actually emailing. Well, we're right. We have nobody here knows what the call was. The, the, the announcer just said, "Well, we don't know what the call was." I do. I do. Our coaches just told me. They said there was an inadvertent whistle. Are oh, you serious? Oh, you got to be kidding. What a joke. Hey, folks, this, I tell you what, and I hope Julian Tackett's listening. This is a travesty. This is a home-cooked situation. I never heard a whistle. They said there was an inadvertent whistle. An inadvertent whistle that, takes a touchdown off the board. Well, of course, it takes the go-ahead touchdown off the board, and it doesn't occur. <laughs> it, it, it does not occur until Woodford is signaled a touchdown. A touchdown. Both of the, the, the – They have the to have a – they have to talk about it in the end zone. 
They give it off to Stacy, running right. Dragging people with him. And there's a face mask right in the, right in the middle of it. That's Selma again. He gets two. They called it a inadvertent whistle, folks. It takes a touchdown off the board. Now, I heard no whistle. And we have headsets on, so we can hear pretty good. Second down and eight. And I've even got my hearing aids on tonight, With so three, I'll be able to hear really well. Three and a half to play. This is. Nason back to throw. He has Makai Smith available. And again, in high school football, you can be knocked out of bounds. But again, he got a late hit. Up third, down, third and eight. And eight. No, we're, we're not going to. Unbelievable. This is, I'm just standing here in shock. I, I, you know, we have been hard all night on the officials, but an inadvertent whistle. I never heard a whistle. <laughs> Looking for And he said he's out of bounds. I believe he was out of bounds. I don't know. It was close, but I believe he was out of bounds. And it's fourth and eight. 313 to play. And folks, this is the ball game here. However, I tell you what, if I'm Roy Lucas and Simon Kenton, these five gentlemen in the stripes are on my Christmas card list. They better be. Because that was an absolute gift right now. It'd be more than a Christmas card. I mean, this is just. Mason. Time out, Woodford County. Well, there was no uh, inadvertent whistle. And if, the, if there was an inadvertent whistle, it came after the ball was snapped. Well, so what's that do? The ball's live. It's not dead now because it's not in anybody's control. Correct? Correct. Well, no player on the field even acted like they'd heard no, a whistle. Nobody. We didn't get a conversation about an inadvertent whistle until after the touchdown and the officials decided to start talking to each other. Nobody was standing on the field blow, waving their arms to call this down as a as a – as a dead Nobody. ball situation. Nobody did. Nobody. All the officials, including the back judge, who was back here with the return guy, had sprinted down the field. Yep. This is so, This has been nothing but bottom line taken away from Woodford County tonight. It's been a, it has been a, a snow job. Fourth and eight. And if the, if the high school association does not go back and look at this tape. These guys don't need a playoff game. They do not. Fourth and eight. Game on the line right here for Woodford County. And again, Shaber got, just reached out and grabbed Makai Smith. Incomplete North Simon Kenton's probably going to win this thing right now, but I tell you what, give a big, big pat on the back to the guys in the stripes. Absolutely. They big took this pat. one away from they took this away from a good football game. Yes. And made it a ball game that people are going to talk about. You know, this could have been walked away yes, saying, sir. boy, that was a good football game tonight. But Heck the, of a football game. But the officials did something that an official should never do. They got themselves involved. They inserted themselves into the game. And Woodford County. I tell you what, folks, this football team deserves a lot better faith than what they're getting tonight here. And I have backed up my madness. I have sent a, I've sent a text to one of the top football official assigners in the state with my comments about this crew. Time out. Time Boy, I tell you, though, it's, it has been – this has been nothing shy of a, just an absolute 
Um, steel job. It, I mean, I, there's nothing else to say about it, Brian. No, I mean, there's nothing else. I mean, you can't tell me. Every player on the field, all 11 players, if somebody had an inadvertent whistle, somebody would have stopped. would have stopped. They didn't. Nope. Well, just got an update. 63-13 final on the Mercer West Jessamon score. Unbelievable here tonight. And I tell you what, I, I apologize to our fans because I've lost my composure. But I, I, you know, if we get beat like we did last year in South Orange, we just get beat. We're going to beat. They give it off to Lawson. He gets down to the 28-yard line. It'll be second down with three minutes to play. No gain on the play. We'll make it second down and 10. Time to get and go take as much time as they can. Whitford has one timeout left. And I tell you what, I don't know what kind of, uh, I haven't seen a, a security presence here at all. But these guys have to come right by the Whitford County bench for the crowd. That's not where I'd want to go if I was fishing. They give it off to Lawson. Another hold on the far side. No call. And they get down inside the 10 to about the 8-yard line. A little bit of home cooking has helped out the Pioneers tonight. Well, a whole lot of home cooking. We're not even going to say a little bit. I, you know, I could, I can overlook the missed calls that they had earlier. But to decide this game the way the officials just decided it, it – it's a shame. I mean, an absolute shame. And I'm glad my license, I'm glad I've given up my license because I'd probably give them I up agree. for good I, after there, There's no excuse for this. None. I mean, it, this is just horrifying. Crone keeps it, goes up the middle, and drops it to six. Chase Crone. And Woodford County will call their Over final timeout five. with a minute 47 to play. Right and again, I don't mind if we come up and we County. and we get beat by a better ball Matthew club. Now, there's Tower. no excuse here. Simon Kent's a really good football team. I'm not saying they're not. I'm they're not taking anything they're away They're a good from football team. They've got the a very good offense. The problem I have is when you get five guys in stripes that decide they're going to de determine how they're this gonna, game ends. They're going to change the outcome of the game. And they did. Mm -hmm. No excuse. And how they can look at themselves and know I, we took a, took this away from a really good, I, not only a good football game, but a good football team. We literally inserted ourselves and took it from them. I, I, I can't imagine. I, I, I've gone back in the years of officiating, and I've missed some calls, okay? Oh, it's I've human missed nature. some calls. But I go home at night, and I think about missing that call, and it bothers me. Yep. You know, I didn't miss it on purpose. I just missed it because I was either out of position or just missed it. But to make a call against a team on a purpose that takes away a game, I... Drone keeps it. He'll go in for the touchdown. And, again, that's another gift touchdown, though. This game's going to look like Simon Kenton dominated, folks. That's the furthest thing from the truth. Well, I got a I got the furthest a, thing from the truth. I got to compliment Jasper Johnson there. He had a he had a chance to take a shot at the quarterback right at the goal line, and and he chose not to. Um, well, I will tell you this: if I know Dennis Johnson, the extra point by number thirty-seven. If I know Dennis. This is what I do. Uh, now there's a, they're gonna call a, they're gonna call a penalty, unsportsmanlike on Caleb Brown. That's again because they don't. There's there's not enough yellow flags against Woodford tonight. The extra point is good. We have a dead ball, unsportsmanlike. Penalty against County. Uh, we got an official here on the near side holding his right ear. Like, I don't want to hear what's coming from the Woodford sideline. Yeah. It has been an absolute robbery up here tonight. Absolute robbery tonight. 
And the Jackets, they're going to go to nine and one, I believe. I don't, uh, if it's a minute 43, I, I would love to see a huge comeback, but I just don't see it. But I will tell you this. If those five guys can get up tomorrow morning and look at themselves in the mirror, they're a bigger man than I am. Because if I did what I've done tonight, I, I could not look at myself the next day. Yeah, I mean, it, it's. Could not. Could I've, not. I've just got, uh, there, there's just no words for it. I mean, I, I mean, mean, I'm sorry we're beating it to death, but folks. If, you watch, if you've been with us throughout, and we've had several people comment, this is the worst officiated game I've ever seen. Uh, you know, you just, you just, if you want to. Garnett's kick goes into the end zone. So Woodford County will take over first and 10 at the road, 20 yards. And the Jackets will come out on the offense to some great things happen tonight for Woodford County. And, and again, you know, you, you get. You be, get beat by a really good team, but you're in the ball game, despite all the stuff going on. And then you get a, a, a huge momentum break. And I, I tell you what, I'm going to go back and watch this. And I'm going to, yeah. uh, and I want to hear. I'm going to hear, uh, listen specifically well, for this we, inadvertent whistle. We've had we've had a listener that texted me and said. They'd rerun it three times and never heard a whistle. Thank you. Um, Nason back to throw. He's going to go down. He's going to go down. Andrew Nason held, on, held on to it too long, but he was looking for guys to go down. Aiden Harris on the sack. Now, we're going to try to run, hurry up, and they're not going to let us. No, they're not going to. They're in there in the way. Well, i tell you what, I hope Simon Kitten's proud of what they've done tonight because it's not been one of those. They screamed at Stacy. He has a lot of room to run. Gets up to the 49-yard line. I'm surprised we won't get a blindside block on Samuel Garrison. Got a guy down back here hurt. There's a guy hurt back here. You need to turn around, White Hat. He was back there where the White Hat was. Now you don't see it, I don't well, know. He's not back. He's not only back there, but Micaiah Smith's trying to get the referee's attention to tell him that there's a player down. Unbelievable is all I can say. You have a guy back there in the back. 59.6 to play. Whitford County trying to get. They actually put it up to 101. They only put two seconds back on the clock. Now they're blowing the whistle. Yeah, he's got a date tonight. You see him? <laughs> Hurry it up. It's called 60 seconds on a timeout, not 20. Oh, now, now yeah, they keep now telling the offense to hurry up. Yeah. It's past his bedtime. It's past 10 o'clock. Sorry. Well, he wants it. to start the clock before the ball's the even snapped. He gets hit as he throws. He's knocked down, and that one should have been targeting because that was a helmet-to-helmet blow from Selma. Selma's a good football player, folks. He goes six foot four, six five, two ninety-five. Love to see him in Kentucky blue and white after next year, but boy, I tell you, <laughs> what do you do, Brian? What do you do? Uh, one of the few times that, that I'm a little bit speechless, Darren. I... There's a face mask on bowling. Or Blyer. Alexander. Alexander with the catch. That's Jabari Alexander. First and 10 at the Woodford County, or at the Simon Kenton 40. Good enough for Woodford County first down. Woodford County spikes the ball on first down. It'll make it Boy, I'll tell you what, when, when I hear uh, the, uh, somebody back home listening said they've run it back three times and haven't heard the inadvertent whistle, yeah. I'm going to tell you right now, on huddle, it will be uploaded for Coach Dennis Johnson to watch, right? I'll guarantee you he'll fast forward to that play. Yeah. Second down and 10.
this is a this is a tough way to have your first game, first loss of the season. Mason gets hit from behind. And he's going to call that an incomplete pass. Now he just calls it going out of bounds at the 46-yard line. Yeah, I'm not sure that his arm was going forward. I think that. Well, he was he was getting ready to call it an incomplete pass, and then he said no, it went out of bounds. Third and 17 for Woodford County. 43 40, uh, 34. However, it should be 41 37. Yes, it right should now. be. Mason, third down and long. Steps up, throws across the middle. Jabari Alexander has it. Mason is pass complete. Officials don't have a clue where the sticks are. No. They have no clue. You can't Fourth spike about it. Five. Down and five. Mason back to throw. Makai Smith with the catch. Mason First and ten complete. from the 27-yard line. 19 seconds is all that remains. Going to have to spike the ball here. Clifford Clock should have been at 22 block, seconds. It and, and it got all the way down to 19. Folks, that one gets down to 16.7. Of course, we are on the road, folks. Clifford County fans really upset. Now, you know, there's, there's something that just irks me more than anything. Woodford fans are really after their officials. Yep. And he acknowledges the fact that they're. There's pass interference. That was pass interference. He pulled Makai Smith's hand down. You cannot tell you me can't. you can't call that. It'll be third down and 10 for Woodford County. I, I tell you what. These extreme, <laughs> these extreme uh, this is this has gotten comical. I'm gonna laugh because I can't. If I don't laugh, it's just gonna be a, an absolute nightmare. Third down and ten for Woodford County with 11.3 to play. Mason back to throw. Throws out here in the flat to Stacy. Stacy upended. And that'll do it. Simon Kenton's going to enjoy this, but I tell you what, they better shake the guys in the, in the stripes' hands. Simon Kenton moves to 7-3, and three, Woodford County to 9-1. and one. But I tell you what, it is an absolute travesty. And now, he has, now the Whitehead has something to say to one of the coaches. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, that was horrible, folks. And I have, in 39 years, I've seen a lot of games happen that have seen some stuff taken. But I, you, now that, that one was no. just flat taken away from Woodford. I mean, taken. it just flat taken away. And I just, I, I have really, really, really. Uh, you know, si you know that, not taking anything away from Simon Kenton. They are a very good football club. But I, this game has been one tonight that has really, really going to stick in my crawl uh, for a, for a road, uh, on the road trip home because that I have never seen an unbelievable situation where Woodford County falls to nine and one, and it's just uh, uh, Woodford County fans are, are excited about it. And they should be. I mean, they win the football game on the scoreboard. But a huge assist from the guys in the stripes. And the Jackets really, um, Brian tonight, did they, were they on top of their game defensively? No, they played a very good offensive unit on, in Simon Kenton. But here's the problem that I have. You cannot, cannot, if you're Simon Kenton, sit here and go, 
Yeah, we earned that game because that was taken and put away. Said an inadvertent whistle. Because it got it was a homer, the homer job. But Woodford County loses it tonight by a final score of 43 to 34, folks. And uh, uh, Brian, uh, we sit here and, and you know we can point out a lot of things tonight. Woodford County. Well, turnover didn't do. We didn't. Turnover we turned the ball early. Over. Yeah, we, we fumbled we, the ball uh, on the first drive of the game for us. They go down and score. Uh, then they we go down and we get to the one yard line and we fumble. We'll be are getting ready to go in. Uh, and then we we just gave up too many big plays. We gave up too many big plays. We fought back. We fought hard. But it is very tough when you you your defense continues not playing their best, but continues to 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 fight and scrap and claw, and you get a bad snap. You go back, you hustle back, you knock the football loose. Everybody runs to the end zone, including the officials, all the officials. And, and then for some reason, you get three officials hunting down the goal line. And, okay, I said, well, they're going to move them all back to the 20. No, folks, they yeah. bring it all the way out to the 48-yard line and say the play never happened and they put no time back on the clock. You know, we, we, were, we were standing here in disbelief watching it and, and thinking, well, okay, they're, they're going to rule that the player was down at the 20 at the 20 and we wouldn't have been happy with that but it would have been a call that could have been justified i can see that happening but to bring the ball back to the original line of scrimmage and make a statement that it was an inadvertent whistle and then not put time back on the clock they let the result of the play from the clock run um tells me immediately what happened was the officials lost control of the game at that they it, it it just it was poor officiating and it it hurts me to say that but i'm well, but we i both, feel like we both have been officials at one time but i feel like i'm qualified to say it for the number of years that i put on the field that was poor officiating yep um, and it was poor professionalism of, of officiating uh, but, you know, Woodford lost tonight. We'll, we'll take this loss. We'll take it back home. Well, I'll tell you what, if I'm Whitley County, I do not want to see that, that the Jackets lost. Tonight. No, I, do, I, I would not want to be Whitley County nope. coming into Community Stadium on Friday night because uh, the Jackets are going to be out for a win. Uh, but it'll be an opportunity to go back, do a little bit of reflection, recognize some mistakes that you made, correct those mistakes and just come out and make a march march for the state championship starting friday night yep well woodford county loses tonight here in independence and folks you all know brian's and my thoughts on this this was not a loss which they were given this was a loss that was taken and kind of I don't know the word I'm looking for. I, I, I'm at a loss for words, believe it or not. Well, I, we're we're both at a loss for words. We, you know, we're we're upset that this occurred. Uh, but the only thing that we can do is take this back to the dressing room, back to the training room, look at the tape, figure out where we made mistakes tonight, correct those next week, and get started started fresh again. Yeah. Uh, there's nothing that we can do about what just occurred. Uh, and, you know, you want to congratulate Simon Kenton. They won. You always want to say congratulations to the team that wins a game. Um, and they played a good game. They've got a good offense. They've got a great quarterback. Um, and they were just the recipients of, of some help tonight. Mm -hmm. And um, that's about all we can say at this point. We have probably beat this subject up really hard and, yeah, folks, we have beat it up a lot, but but it 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 hurt right here to be witnessing it firsthand. Yeah, and, and when you when you have it, and then you hear that they said it was an inadvertent whistle. It, I mean, and Simon Kenton right now is acting like they won the state championship, but you know they 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 win the football game on the scoreboard, but with a lot of help, and the Jackets will go back to the drawing board uh, this weekend and. Uh, 
it's it's going to be one of those situations where I I, I would not want to be uh, Woodford County's next opponent because it's not going to be a, a, a team that's going to come in and, and not be focused. That, that Woodford County team will be focused, and it is going to be tough for anybody coming into Community Stadium next Friday night in the first round of the playoffs. Brian, uh, thank you for, for helping tonight. Uh, unfortunately, we couldn't get us over the hump. Uh, again, it's kind of tough to, to – overcome some of the obstacles that were thrown out in front of Woodford County tonight. Not of Woodford County's own doing, to be honest with you. Um, and uh, we'll see you next Friday night. Well, looking forward to it. Want to encourage everybody that's listening, be at Community Stadium next Friday yep. night. Come out be Friday there. night. And here's the thing, tomorrow after uh, tomorrow morning, 11 o'clock, 8th grade, Woodford County Middle School Tigers start their playoff run or continue their playoff run in the region championship to go against uh, Union Jaguars right out of this northern Kentucky area. And then we got at 5 o'clock, the seventh grade looks to continue undefeated when they take on Georgetown Middle School at 5 o'clock. Uh, till next Friday night, we also want to tell our military veterans, you'll, you're admitted free next Friday night for the Whitford County, Whitley County playoff game at Community Stadium if you show your military ID. So we'll hope to have you there next Friday night. So Brian on color for all our fine sponsors. This has been the UK Sports Medicine High School Game of the Week. The final score again from Independence was Simon Kenton 43 and Woodford County 34. Until next Friday night, so long.